There it is. There it is. All right. Nice. All right, there we go. Hi, everyone. Uh, before we do the official intro, if you want to, you know, join in and put where you're watching from, we like to start these off by giving little shout outs as people are joining in. It might be even a little weirder today because it was daylight savings times. Uh, or was it last weekend or? I think it was I last think it was weekend, last, yeah. but I think for a lot of people it's an hour before, so this might be a little different, and I think a lot of people are going to be an hour late, but that's okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, if you guys want to put where you're watching from, we'll go ahead and get started. And also, while we're waiting here, I feel so just shuffled all of a sudden. All right. <laughs> There's everything. Oh my gosh. All right. So hello everyone. I hope everyone's having a great Wednesday. Uh, I did want to show off. We have some new pins. Let me see. Where can I? Ta -da! Oh, is this frozen right now? <laughs> of course. Oh, the phone. <laughs> yeah. Refresh. Oh. No. As always, there's always one thing that goes wrong at the beginning of the stream, and then we have to fix it. And then Josh, if you want to do the shout outs while I try to maneuver through fixing this. Yeah, you might have to just restart your phone. I think it's the way to do last time this happened. No, I think this is OBS this time. Possibly. Because last week when it did this, if we just turned the phone off and back on it, like, I'll try. it's so strange. All right, let's see who's here today. Anthony, hello from Massachusetts. Good to see you, Anthony. Hello, hello. Uh, Eunuch, hello from Germany, joining with a friend today. Nice. Charles, hi from Scotland. Uh, Ian, hello. I'm watching from Scotland. Oh, we have another Scotland person. Um... We have Anna, hello, hello from hello. Michigan. Felix, hi from Germany. Thankfully, I saw it started earlier just now. Yeah, I guess I never knew that, but some places don't do daylight savings time. I, this happens every year for me on in the fall and in the spring. Yeah, because it like changes it's up. different. Yep. Uh, Harrison, England here. Hello, Harrison. Ladika Leticia says hello from Brazil. Hello, hello. Night Tessa says hi from Jamaica. Hello. We have Lights and Sea. Hey from North Carolina. Veronica, hi from Finland. Hey, Jim. Hello, hello, MJ. Oh, Tigel, hello. Hello from <sighs> behind you. <laughs> you made me look, Tigel. Saini, uh, hello from Sweden. Hello, hello. Um, Anthony says, I hope you guys don't mind. I'm just watching while I work on the elements of my first illuminated manuscript. Of course. Yeah, Edith, of course not. Hello from Scotland. We have a lot of people from Scotland. <laughs> it's all Jonathan's influence. <laughs> Cedric, hello from Belgium. Hello, Cedric. Paula, hello. hello from Brazil. Eternal Light, hello from Greece. There we go. We have Finland, hello from the Netherlands. Okay, I think we're good. Good. Oh, thank gosh. Okay, well, hello, hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome. So as I was trying to show up earlier, we have some new things <laughs> that are going on the store this weekend. And uh, all the Patreon backers that we have on Patreon are going to be getting this for free. So if you want to get this pin for free at kind of a huge discount, you could just sign up for my Patreon, get the pin, and then unsubscribe. <laughs> I shouldn't be recommending that, but I know people do that. And this is the one that we are giving away. So that's what we're wearing. And that is our giveaway for this season. I try to do a pin or like some kind of a physical reward for my Patreon members every season. So every fall, winter, summer, spring. And that is our spring one. And our summer one I'm pretty excited for because it's not going to be a pin. It's going to be something a little different, mm -hmm. uh, but I'll announce that later. Okay. So hello. I hope everyone's having a wonderful Wednesday. Let's see here. Make sure you get all your tools and supplies together. Actually, no, I'm going to keep it in the sketchbook. Hello, hello. <laughs> yeah, we do have a lot of people here today. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I guess I can give a quick little glimpse, not a very long one. <gasps> I have my new tarot card all finished. 
That's all I'm given. <laughs> uh, but that one will be out on Tuesday. I'm going to push out the final. And I, I've been getting a lot of questions of, am I finished with the tarot deck? When is it going to be done? Are you actually making one? And the answers to all of them are yes, but I'm not done yet. And to be frank, I only have four done at the moment. So it'll be a while. For those of you who don't know, there's 78 cards. So I have quite the journey to go on. Um, I'm going to turn that down just one. There we go. Right there. Nice. And it's something I'm trying to do like one or two a month roughly. That's kind of the schedule I'm at right now. And I'll, hopefully it'll go smoothly. I had some bumps in the road with the High Priestess, but the Hangman went really quickly and it went really well. So I'm hoping I can kind of keep that momentum going. Okay. Are we all ready then? We are all ready. All right, let's do the official intro. Hi everyone, I'm Timothy Von Rieden, better known as Von Art Online, and I'm joined by my boyfriend and moderator, Josh. Sure. Schwa, <laughs> and he <laughs> will be schwa. and he will be running all the comments today. So if you have any comments or questions regarding what we're working on, or even any art business questions or film questions, whatever it may be, uh, we are free to discuss that, and we are here for you guys as well as to strengthen our skills, uh, specifically today on light drawing. Uh, I know I did one, I think two or three weeks ago, that was on the female anatomy and female poses, and. Uh, it, I really do believe light drawing is like essential for especially character artists. So today we're going to be focusing on the male uh, body and physique. And this is going to be a little different. There are some differences between the male and female body uh, generally. And that is what we're going to be focusing on today. So I, just to not get banned from YouTube, I do have these models today will be clothed. I think there's something a little different between... Uh, the male and female down below area, and I think YouTube would flag me immediately. <laughs> so we'll see. But I do have them all clothed, except for our one-hour pose. He's technically naked, but you don't see anything uh, promiscuous. So thankfully, we are uh, good for today, and you don't have to worry if this makes you uncomfortable, like seeing nude bodies. The viewers just drop right now. Yeah. <laughs> Half. Darn just it. <laughs> So that is what we're going to be working on today. We're going to be doing the format we did last time, which you can see right, wait, where's my finger? Here. We're going to be doing the five one minute, three five minute, three ten minutes, and then one one hour long pose. We'll probably do a break in between the three ten minute and the one one hour, and that'll be like a three you know minute break so everyone can go to the bathroom, refresh themselves, and get ready for the hour pose because that's personally my favorite, but you got to you know loosen up. You got you to build up to it. And that is what we're going to be doing today. So the only other thing I want to say before uh, we get started is, as with every life drawing session, really try to think of an intention and a focus that you want to focus or work on. And for me, I think today I'm going to really focus, I think once again, on shadow and value. It's something that I explored in the last life drawing session, but I want to continue that even more. And if you feel like you struggle with proportions, well, really have that be your intention today. With every sketch, every pose, really focus on the proportions. Or let's say you feel like you're really bad at adding values, making things look dimensional. Uh, really have that be your focus. And if things are a little proportionally off or have some you know, lighting mistakes, it's something that you still should work on. But it's... You know, if that's a little off, but your proportions are much better or your value study is much better, uh, then that's kind of a win in my book because then your intention was worked on. And I think it's good to like focus on what you think you're either weak on or need to be strengthening. And hopefully then over time, all of those components become so much stronger that you don't have to necessarily worry about one holding you back. So yeah, we're going to be starting soon. So Josh is going to be the our timer, our switcher, everything. So we're kind of relying on him today. I'll try not to miss one of them this time too. Yes, main goal. Yes. Okay. Uh, you know what though, before we start, let's see, because I feel like there's a lot, there's some comments here. Oh, well, thank you, Tijl, for posting the Patreon. <laughs> Tijl is one of our beautiful, wonderful mods. He is uh, not only a mod for the stream, but he's also a mod for our Discord channel. Oh, and I should mention, uh, for this stream specifically, we have a stream follow-along channel in our Discord. So after our poses and after our drawings, you can post your submissions there, because after we do the actual light drawing session, I'm going to be doing a mini critique where I'm going to look at all of your guys' one-hour submissions and just kind of briefly give you some tips or advice on um, things that I think could be better, some constructive criticism. 
And that is our goal for today. So you can join that below. And as always, we have you know, the YouTube donations. We actually have text-to-speech now, so if you want to write something silly, uh, it'll actually talk. We have our bot, Justin, here with us today. <laughs> and, uh, and we also have the custom emojis that you can donate or that you can subscribe to as Josh will. I can uh, show the little emojis. And I'm hoping to make a new one soon. I really want to make Casper. We got a new black cat, and I want her or his head to be right alongside Astrid's. Uh, just to be fair. <laughs> so yeah, and big thank you in advance to anyone that does that. And uh, it kind of keeps me wanting to do more of these because it helps fuel my Wednesdays, essentially. Okay, are we ready to do this? I believe so. All right, All well, right. thank you everyone for joining us and let's go ahead and get started. So Josh, do you want right. to get our one minutes going? Ooh. So I know the Final one minutes stretching. I feel like are probably the most intensive. Um, this layer here, Tim, where did you put that one? So what you're going to be doing is for each of these. There we go. Oh. Perfect. So we'll wait. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, I just didn't know where you had the um, collage at. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. All right. Hey, right, everyone. You guys ready? You got your tools? Let me make sure I'm on the screen. Okay. Tools at the ready? Ready when you are, sir. There we go. Okay, so normally when you do the the minute, these like quick gesture ones, really focus on uh, the pose, the shapes. Be loose with it. Try not to be super tight. And if they're a little exaggerated, who cares? This is literally trying to loosen up our hand, get our lines more fluid and dynamic looking. I have a tendency to make my figures look too tight. So and that's, that's why I really enjoy life drawing because it helps remind me Oh yeah, the pose can look so much better if you just loosen up, you know, that initial structure. All right, 10 seconds. Ah, oh, thank you for the reminder. Perfect. First minute's up. Oh, you know what? You can let it beep just so we can hear it for a second. It didn't beep for some reason. <gasps> oh, no. Yeah. Is my volume turned off? Oh, no. We're good. Oh, no. Yeah, I don't know why it didn't beep. That's okay. You can be our beeper. I will be the beep. <laughs> All right. Everyone get ready for the next minute. We'll start. Next minute. In I'm three, two, and one. So as I was uh, mentioning in the last one, I really try to start with the spine shape and then build off the shoulders and then the hips because those give you your basic foundation to work from for the human body. And if you can nail those, then literally everything else is just layout and making sure the proportions aren't super wonky. Everyone's concentrated. Right. I know whenever we do uh, these streams, I feel like the chat goes like silent whenever we're doing the actual time stuff. I think the minutes are the most nerve-wracking ones. All right, we're down to a little bit under 10 seconds. All right, beep, 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 beep. <laughs> All right, on to the third, third one. minute drawing. Hmm. So now this one's good because you can actually see the spine. So that line you can literally just use as the line for your uh, initial sketch. And I, whenever I do legs, I always imagine the weight that goes on the legs and like pushing that weight around with where the foot is planted. So you can kind of see how he's bending over so his leg that's on our left, is, or his, his left I guess too, it's more extended where the one on the right side uh, is bent and it's kind of holding the rest of his weight. Like 
do that. And then I guess I should make an announcement that next week we will not be streaming because I am going on a family vacation. Well, Josh is coming with me. We're going on a family right, vacation. Time's up on that one. And we will be back then the week after. All right, going to number four or five for the minutes. Timer starting now. Okay. So this one's a little tough. I still try to find you know, that backbone line. But also there's some perspective distortion going on because his kind of lower body crotch area is further away from the camera where his head is closer. So it's kind of creating this distorted perspective. So these are always good to do too because I think I tend to draw very orthographically, which is very flat. Uh, everything's on like the same plane, the same distance away from the viewer. So I think having poses like this are a good reminder that you know the shapes of the body change depending on their relationship to the the camera. All right, ten seconds left. Oh my gosh, <laughs> Tim, I need to go faster. What are you doing? I mean, this is a really strange one, though. All right, and time is up. Woof. On to the last of the minutes. Last of the minutes. And begin. Oh, I almost made this the hour pose. I think it's so strange that it would be such a good challenge. But then I was thinking it might be too challenging. Where I think a lot of people already struggle with the male, uh, the body. Uh, for some reason, I was telling Josh before the stream started, uh, I usually get a lot of comments saying that the male anatomy and the male life drawing uh, sessions are always harder than the female ones. And I think they're just, they're different. But I, I think if you can, you know, find joy in drawing the shapes and values, it really doesn't matter what, you know, a person you're drawing. I think if anything, I have more fun with certain aspects of the male. I mean, there's some things I like better about the female body than the male one. Ten seconds. Ah, but I do feel like uh, a lot of the muscle structure, a lot of the boxiness, that comes with the shape design in males is fun to draw. All right, and time is up. Oh my gosh. Well, those are one minutes. <laughs> That's how they always go, right? Uh, yeah, I, I need to move a little faster. <laughs> I don't know if it's because I'm talking and I'm overthinking, or not thinking enough, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, let's take a look at comments. Anthony says, I know you guys have a green thumb, and I was wondering if you've grown, ever grown ivy. I'm trying to, but my leaves keep dying no matter how much or little I water them. You know, I found this app. What's that plant app called? Plant This, I think it's called. I think it, okay, right? Is plant, it plant This. this? Yeah. So it's like $1 or something. And you can take a picture of any plant you have in your house, and it will diagnose if something's wrong with it, like how to fix it. So I know now every plant in this house I have literally on that app. So I know, okay, it needs to be watered how many times a week. And it needs to be part sun or full sun or shaded. And that's been really helpful. I've been able to resurrect a lot of our plants from the dead because of that app. So if if that helps, I would look into it. I, I think it's very worth it. I'm not even like sponsored or anything. I just think it's incredibly useful. So hopefully that helps. I've never grown ivy though. All right, we ready? We are ready, yeah. All right, okay, so everyone. on to the five minutes. So don't forget the overlay. Oh, yes. I knew there was really something I'd forget. So you click here. Yep. And then I think it's the cover up. Yeah. All right. Okay, guys. So now with five minutes, you have literally five times the amount of time, but that doesn't mean you go slower. So still have that looseness. And that's, I'm kind of saying it also as a reminder to myself uh, because we want to make sure that we're staying fluid, especially in the early stages of capturing motion. Okay. Let's Perfect. go up and head and do this. Right. Just make sure your sketchbook's on the camera too. Oh yeah, I should just push it way up. There we go. All there right. We go. All right, starting in three, two, and one. Ooh, okay. Yeah, so I, I do want to note that I got all these photos from, it's a YouTube uh, 
channel that you can actually find below. It's called, I think it's, oh, I don't want to mess this up, but I think it's New Masters Academy. And uh, you can find more of their videos below. They have a bunch of different models, and uh, I think they're really good with their lighting and their poses. Because I, I went to college where the poses weren't always, let's say, spectacular. It was a lot of swinging a golf club, playing baseball, shooting a basketball. It's like things that I think the models didn't really know how to pose, so they just resorted to sport poses, which as an artist, I'm not really looking or inclined to draw sport poses specifically. Um, but then you look at something like this, and you can tell that the model understands his body. He can understand uh, how to move it, how to pose it. And these are always way more fun to draw because there's a lot more values. There's uh, like good shape design going on. And uh, a lot of the videos that this YouTube channel had uh, were just excellent in that. So I would highly recommend it if you ever want to do these on your own. All right, let's see here. Stay loose, Tim, stay loose. Yeah, I feel like he has like fluid motions, but he still has a stiffness about it too, which is interesting. Yeah, out of all the models, this was the one who his poses all, all seemed like very, like uh, how would Tyra Banks say it? From like head to toe, modeling head to toe, <laughs> where it's not just like a hand pose that's really interesting, but the rest of the body's really stiff. It seems like he's like pulling the motion all the way through. Yeah. Which is nice. And I think that's another reason why people generally like to draw um, females during life drawing session over male, because usually female models tend to have more of a fluidness to their pose. I do, I will say, a lot of the male models I've uh, gone to for life drawing studies have been a bit stiffer than uh, the female ones. Um, I was here. I won't be able to participate today because of bad planning on my part. So I'll be lurking and making dinner. Well, hello, well, enjoy Ella. Enjoy the lurking today. Have fun lurking. <laughs> well, missing your stuff, though. You always do such a good job. For real, though. Um, we have... Oh, Lena too. Oh no, I'm late again. Had a work meeting before this. Hope I can at least do some of the studies before the hour went at this time. So some things to do before I can start. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We just started the five minute ones too. So that's what, like 15 minutes on these still. And then there's the three 10 minutes. So hopefully you'll. Yeah, I think you got it. I think you'll be good. Um, MJ says, what are your thoughts on tracing a sketch or some parts from several reference photos? I struggle with drawing just by looking at something and it bugs me a lot and I lose the motivation <gasps> for drawing. Oh, well, thank you, Shua. See, I don't, I'm not getting the volume on this. Oh, no. Hold on. Why is that happening? Oh, wait, maybe that one? Oh, and now it should work? That was weird. Maybe. I've never had that before. Well, I mean, even the fact that the buzzer's not playing. Are your ear pods still connected? No, they're in their case. Oh. No, we'll, we'll just wait for the next one. I'm okay. sorry, Schwa. Even though I know it's not actually <laughs> Schwa. I wonder who it could be. <laughs> <laughs> I know we missed the message even. Oh my gosh, it doesn't even show on the right side? Oh my god. Gosh, hang on. All right, Josh is going to investigate. There's got to be a way we can find it. Oh, you know what? I did update OBS this morning. I wonder if that had something to do with it. Hmm. But thank you, Schwa, for whatever long message you wrote. <laughs> Appreciate it, Schwa. Um, I have a doppelganger out what there. What was that? question what are your thoughts on tracing a sketch um you know i think if you're you're just starting out it's, it's 10 seconds left oh my gosh are you kidding oh you got a little distracted there i did get a little distracted oh no oh i actually like this pose no all right it's about to go away all right cool time is up on that one let's oh damn 
<laughs> so distracted. All right. Well, hopefully the donations work now. We did. We just changed the setting for the volume, so I'm hoping that that was the fix. Hopefully, right? Hopefully. All right. So in second of the five minutes right now. Yep. Pulling it up in three, two, one, and begin. All right. Just like we were saying with one of the one-minute warm-ups, having that spine in view is great because that literally sets the backbone of the entire drawing then in place. And you can do, this was the bean technique we mentioned on the last one. So you can kind of draw the bean first and then work off of that. There's like, there's a plenty of different ways of uh, doing life drawing studies. So I, I try to go through um, a few because you never know what might click for uh, yourself. Pull that weight down. I really liked uh, one of my life drawing teachers who would like literally like push my hand on the paper and be like, no, push that body down and would like push like really heavy strokes into the paper. Uh, and she was just excellent at like getting me to loosen up because I do tend to do like chicken scratching and go slower. And Mary says, I'm here. Happy Wednesday, everyone. I hope the week is going well so far. Um, also says the male models I drew in college all pose sitting on a stool. One gentleman was falling asleep and turned his head slowly, making his face very difficult to draw. <laughs> he looked like Santa. <laughs> yeah, I've definitely been there before. I was telling Josh, or was this, did we talk about this last stream where someone fell asleep? I can't believe someone fell asleep. Yep. And it was so awkward because then the teacher had to like wake them up. I mean, how long are they? I mean, they're not that long, I feel like, that you could muster the strength uh, to stay I think the awake, longest straight through that we ever did a pose was two and a half hours. But usually, if they're going to do a long pose, usually they're sitting or laying. So, like, it's kind of understandable why guess, someone would fall asleep. Yeah, seat. especially if they, like, worked all day or something and then ran there to do it. Yeah. Oh, the worst is when a model thinks they can hold a pose and it'll be like longer. Like imagine if it was this, but then like halfway through you can see them like shaking. Oh no. I'm like, oh no, buddy. Like, <laughs> why did you pick that pose if you don't think you could hold that? I mean, that is hard though. Definitely been there. I've seen that in person. Back muscles are so weird. I know, back muscles are great. There's so much fun to draw, too. I mean, Tim and I have been doing workouts, so eventually. <laughs> so eventually, Josh will be our model. No. Full nude. But <laughs> full nude. <laughs> That'll be Patreon only. Uh, no, no, that'll be free. <laughs> <laughs> Just handing them out. Hi, right, Tim. Yeah, I don't want to distract you too much. I never too know what these should I just... I'm just going to sit here. <laughs> yeah! No distractions. I'm really trying to get the shadow shapes. Although my proportions are pretty wonky on this one. Sometimes when you're doing life drawing, you just know that something's looking a little one off, minute. but your times, so you're like, oh, well, I got to keep moving. And my one life drawing teacher, uh, she always said that you shouldn't use your eraser during life drawing sessions, especially during the early stages. So as if you're doing an hour pose, it's fine, but for these, you really shouldn't be focusing on the mistakes. You should be focusing on um, that keep going and go quick. She never wanted us to stop. 30 seconds. Oh, Lane's here. 
Oh, hey, Elaine. I made it. You're here for the next one. Yay. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> Tigil for full nude reference of Beefcake Josh. Join the Patreon or OnlyFans. <laughs> beefcake. Are you dressed up as a beefcake? <laughs> <laughs> a cake made out of beef. Oh, that sounds terrible. It's like a vegan nightmare. <laughs> All right. Time is up. Ooh, yeah. I did not like that one. And that happens from time to time. All right. So the last of the five-minute ones. Mm -hmm. Three, two, and one. Oh, this is a different model. Yeah, so this model I really like too, but they only had like one package with him in it. But he has like that lankiness to him, so all of his poses, he was like really able to uh, create some cool forms. He almost reminds me of like posing like, uh, who's the gremlin in Lord of the Rings? A uh, Gollum. Yeah, he, I feel like a lot of his poses felt very Gollum-like. And those are really fun to draw too, because then you can easily translate this into like a spooky character if you did like a, a draw over. Are you saying that because he's bald, Tim? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Actually, what's that one quote from Courage the Cowardly Dog? Oh, when Courage is insulting um, Eustace. Oh my God. You, sir. Or he hands the note or the hunchback the insult. You, sir, are extremely. Bald. Wait, was that the one with the bell guy? Uh huh. Oh, I, that episode is really cute. That's literally my favorite Courage episode. They're all on HBO Max, so. Oh, are they really? I think it was like last month they went to Autumn's and we just watched tons of Courage and that one we watched too. Courage, I just think, is an excellent show. It's scary though. Even watching it now, I'm like, I, I think I see why as a kid I liked it so much though, because it was spooky. I was definitely attracted to spooky. Uh, but not so much like gore horror, but like oh yeah, just mysterious like spooky. Something's off all the time. Yeah, yeah. Because I really liked, obviously, I really like Goosebumps, and I oh, even more obvious, I love Halloween. But then I think of like all the things I was attracted to as a kid. Like I liked Are You Afraid of the Dark? I liked oh, are... Courage the Cowardly Dog. I loved those scary story books. I had all three at the time. There were only three. Um, we had a collection of them all. You the did? Scary... Yeah. What? Yeah. Your family is like the most religious people. How did they allow scary stories to tell in the dark? I don't know. It was at our cabin. We had a cabin up north for a while and we kept it there. I find that very surprising. <laughs> but they're, I mean, they're like spooky. It's not like it's like. I uh, those were not kid friendly. I mean. I, I'm actually surprised that that was like allowed at book sales in grade school. We did. Um, well, even Goosebumps. I loved Goosebumps. Nah, Goosebumps were more kid friendly. There were some of them that I was like, this is questionable. <laughs> uh, and I still think, oh, there's another one. Oh, my God. It's not reading them. Attempt yeah. to help, help. This is the real schwa. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh my. <laughs> I want. I wish Justin was reading these. Your sound on your computer is off. I don't know why. I think it's like. It's off? off? All your sound. Well, yeah, because the buzzer's not going either. All right. Hold on, guys. Is it good? It wouldn't be because of OBS, though. That's what I thought. Um, it'd be your actual sound. It says it's playing. Or wait. Where is the normal output? Oh, gosh, guys. I killed my audio. <laughs> I don't know how. <laughs> oh, Tim. Maybe it's when you do the AirPods, you have to like restart or something that just bugs out. So Josh is kind of learning this about me. I... And I know that this is such an old person thing to say, but I just break technology. Wherever I, I go, wherever I'm around it, it just doesn't it doesn't work like it should. <laughs> Clearly my ignorance is not helping in the fact either because I then when I try to fix it, I have no idea what I'm doing. So then I feel even more in the dark with uh, what to do. I don't know, Tim. I mean, I just honestly show up to these streams, so... I yeah, kind of expect your sound would be in place, though, but... You're supposed to be my helper with this stuff. Oh, well, I didn't know the sound wasn't going to work. I just, I just need a scapegoat to blame someone else beside myself. One minute. One ah. minute left. No time for sips. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Tim, you need to focus. Stop blaming your problems on other people. <laughs> P 
private banker who's the George Washington looking dude sitting next to the artist. <laughs> it's George, of course. <laughs> that was my buddy George. He stops in every Wednesday. <coughs> I mean, I'm probably going to have wooden teeth one day. I soon. Honestly. <laughs> 15 seconds. Gosh dang it, Tim. All right, the next one I'm going to really focus on. I've been doing a bad job with focusing. All right, time is up. Well, at least we're on to the 10 minutes now. Okay. Oh, that's right. Switch my paper. All right, 10 minutes. All right. Starting in three, Oof. two, and one. All right. I'm going to do a better job at focusing on this one. We should almost see if the donations could still be written in chat then, too. Yeah, why aren't they being written in chat? Yeah. Oh, wait. Tigil, Tigil apparently wrote it down as it came out. Um, attempt to help, help. This is the real schwa. The next one, <laughs> the one next to you is an imposter. Also, Astrid puked again on insert an appropriate item here. <laughs> I want my previous dollar back. Ooh, 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 ooh. I should have read that in Justin's voice. Uh, what uh, is it, Justin's? He goes like, Justin attempt to... Like he was, wait, where is it? To help, help. He's kind of airy. That I feel is like. not Justin's voice. Okay, you try it. That was I, like sensual woman. <laughs> <laughs> no, he goes attempt to help is. Or wait, I can't read it though. It's blocked. Attempt to help, help. This help is the, real, is the schwa. real schwa. The one next to you is an imposter. He has like a raspy, but like kid-like almost. Interesting. Uh, I need to focus. I can't get distracted okay. by that. Yes. But thank you, Real Schwa, for donating. Thanks, Real Schwa. I am the imposter. Nope. I know I said not to use your eraser, but that was horrible. Timothy. You know what? I'm drawing this at a really weird angle. I almost need to... I'm making excuses. Come on, Tim. <laughs> Oh my gosh. There we go. My phone's ringing. How about you set it to uh, airplane mode? The laptop before I do my phone mode. Oh. <laughs> George, I, that's right. I'm George Washington. I kidnapped the real schwa. <laughs> Tim has no idea. Yeah, they do the same thing. <laughs> Where are the cats? I feel like the cats just don't love us anymore. Why am I so bad today? What is going on? Is it the dimension you're kind of struggling with right now, or? Just everything. No, it just sucks. <laughs> Sometimes this happens when I'm in a life drawing class, and I'm just like, man, just everything I'm, like my lines, my proportions, everything just feels like hot garbage. But thankfully, I have a very, like, fixer-up type mind. So I'm like, OK, well, what's looking wrong? Let's try to fix it. Yeah, I feel like usually you're not like, it's just all wrong. You're trying to figure out why it's wrong then. Yeah. No, yeah. I'll never just give up. And I, I honestly, if any of you feel that, not even during a life drawing system, just in drawing in general, just never, never fully give up. You know, just take your time, try to figure out what's looking wrong about it, and then try to attack it. Yeah. 
You're like Sora. Never give up. <laughs> yeah, I thought I was going to really like this pose, but this one's challenging me right now. Private banker, I've been buying silver coins lately and silver certificates. When you look to the right left, you have the look. I could do those. What are those like reenactment places? I have no idea what you guys are talking about. George Washington. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, the real schwa has to be kept in the house still. How else would he know about Astrid puking on the inappropriate object? <laughs> Astrid's in on it, though. She's keeping the real schwa locked <laughs> up to it. A little under five minutes, Tim. Oh my gosh. All right, come on, Tim, pull it together. <laughs> I swear every week. Five minutes left. Oh my gosh. That's kind of how I felt in college too when I would do these. <laughs> Never enough time. Well, I'm someone that I can be really, uh, not necessarily, I wouldn't say slow when I draw, but I, I definitely like to have a care with. Uh, the drawing so doing things quickly are always a, a challenge for me but it's good I need to be challenged uh, it's the only way to get more efficient in drawing and sometimes it really works sometimes I walk out of a light drawing session being like dang I can draw anything <laughs> and then after something like today I'd be like oh boy I should take a break for a day I think this is looking really good. Plus, you had me erased at the two minutes in, so you kind of had to make up for that last time. It's, oh, yeah. it's something. Um, MJ is asking too. Sorry to bother, but I'm really curious about what your thoughts are on tracing. Oh, that's right. Sorry, I got so distracted. Um, I would say that I wouldn't rely on it uh, for the long run. I think it's a good temporary way of like learning proportions or uh, even like maybe just seeing like how the artist interpreted uh, areas of whatever you're tracing. But I do think in the long run it is better to do it uh, like looking back at the image and then going into the drawing. Or if you're doing it digitally or with oil, whatever you're doing, I, I really do believe that the best way to get better at proportions and uh, uh, values and just pretty much everything is to not trace. Uh, I know, I feel like everyone does it at some stage. I know I definitely was that kid that would hold up uh, coloring books, I'd rip out a page, hold it up, and then bring a tracing paper and like trace the coloring book page. And then I would, you know, color it and draw from there. But I feel like that is something that it didn't really teach me anything because I'm not using my. Uh, active brain to uh, really capture uh, what I'm, I'm trying to work on. So I personally am not the biggest fan of it. I, I think to really engage in that part of your brain that needs to learn how to uh, see proportions for yourself and how to understand how anatomy works or the structure of something, uh, I, I really wouldn't trace. And I know it's hard. I know it's not fun. It's like a, a journey. But every, every artist goes on it, so don't feel alone in that. How much time do I got? A minute and a half? Okay. <laughs> Unix says I'm bad today, too. I know, and I was so excited. 
Uh, Felix says, I'm with you, Tim. I feel sort of off today. I'm so slow. It's the worst. <laughs> Especially when you're excited to go and draw and then you, you know, create something that you're not very proud of or you feel like you're not hitting the capacity of your skill. All right, so a little under a minute. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I think the 10 minutes is like a weird time frame. I think the five minutes you kind of go in with like even more of like a direction with it. Where 10 minutes is kind of like not too much time, but also just enough. Yeah, 10 minutes are always weird. I never feel satisfied with 10 minute ones. Or rarely, I shouldn't say never. I rarely feel satisfied with them. Because it's almost like you get enough time to really get a good structure and base. All right, ten, by the, the time is up. Oh, but by the time you really start to detail, it's like, oh, I wish I had more time. Like right now, I just got into like doing heavier mark making. Oh my gosh, hold on. All right, shake All right. it off. Taylor Swift can it. stretch. Okay. I need to take this off though. It's getting kind of warm. It's all my fuming rage at this drawing. Right, okay, it's just... We got two more tendons though, right? Yes. yes. Yep. All right. All, all right. right. Redemption arc. Here we go. <laughs> Ten minute number two. And you can begin now. Oh, we got a super oh hard pose. Actually, wait. Make sure you guys can see this. I might go a little slower on this one and like have my pencil lines feel purposeful. This is kind of another way to do life drawing where um, we were taught this way where you had, oh, what would it be called? Like a limited amount of lines that you could use. So it'd be like, okay, you have 50 lines. Try to do it with 50 lines. So each one you kind of really plan out and then you build it off of that, which is literally the opposite of how I normally work. But maybe I could use some of that right now. Yeah, this is an interesting pose. I'm, yeah, I'm telling you, this, this model just did an excellent job at creating very weird, fully realized poses. <laughs> Unix says you really chose those interesting poses today. <laughs> I did. Well, I just fell in love with the way that he was uh, modeling. Because it almost feels like these would be more uh, like feminine poses or like almost ballet poses. But I think he executed them so well. I mean, even look at his toe. Like it, his foot is fully pointed and it's like straight down. I think that's great. It's like a commitment to a kind of a harder pose. Because I'm sure that doesn't feel good holding this for as long as he held it. Hi, what is this drawing? <laughs> it's very it's a very strange pose. <laughs> uh this is a life drawing session. We're doing the male study today. Um I chose poses that are way better at 
kind of accelerating the way that uh, we can get better at drawing um, people because these poses really force you to think outside of how you normally would see a body and like even I'm having some struggles with a lot of this because these are poses obviously I've never really drawn before. He has that right arm, that shoulder is like pushed back really far. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this had to be super uncomfortable. I kind of want to try this one after the stream. Just the pose? Yeah, I want to see how he did that. Even this thumb's got like a weird distortion. Or not distortion, just placement. Oh, you almost looks like you broke it. <laughs> he just like snapped his thumb for this picture. Commitment. <laughs> Felix, okay, this is the worst one I'm skipping. <laughs> Tijol says, try it after the stream, why not now? Come on, you can do it. I'm not doing this on the stream, Tijol. <laughs> it does look painful, actually, though. The more I keep looking at it, because even his foot... That would hurt so bad, because he's pushing his, like, foot. I'm not flexible at all, so that's probably why it would hurt me a lot. All right, four minutes, 30 seconds, Tim. All right. Yeah, Felix, no skipping, you got this. I feel like we can do movie talk and stuff during the hour one because I feel like you're less pressured possibly yeah this one I don't know today I'm just a little off which is weird usually with dry, light drawing I'm like comfort zone oh yeah you're right Allah. his expression really isn't radiating comfort <laughs> he looks he looks distressed in the face. That's kind of the face I make when Tim makes me pose for things and it's taking just a little extra longer for the photo. Mm -hmm. Like Tim, <laughs> take this darn photo right now. <laughs> Baron Josh doesn't necessarily like getting reference photos done. <laughs> Sometimes, but I feel like I'm malleable though. As long as you like just, I'll just stand there and Tim will just kind of pose me if I need to and I'll hold it. But yeah. I'm not like natural with it at all. I know because you're, you're a very pretty person. But I feel like if when I tell you to pose, you're like. <laughs> I'm just a little <laughs> stiff is all. <laughs> um. But I feel like I'm kind of like those, where those model things, the like... Mannequins? The man yeah. I'm like a mannequin because you can kind of just put it where you want it to go and I'll <laughs> keep it there. <laughs> I mean, true. I have posed you before where like, okay, now just hold this. And you're pretty good at that. We could do animal life drawings 
Capose, Astrid, and Casper. They wouldn't hold it for more than 10 seconds. There's no way. I'd have to get them sleeping somehow before the stream. Anyone with more than one cat, do you ever deal with like food issues? Because sometimes we have it where like Astrid or Casper will try to eat the other's food. We're trying to figure that out right now. It's like our new predicament with the two of them. <laughs> Felix, okay, I'm not skipping, but how is this worse than my five minute ones? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, this one's definitely proving to be difficult too. I definitely threw a challenge our way today. I thought this would be a fun as hell, but these are definitely tough. Especially when you're already kind of having an off day or you just aren't feeling, you know, your drawing mojo. I mean, these are, <laughs> these are tough. <laughs> All right, 30 seconds left. <laughs> Tidjil says I have such a funny image in my mind right now. Josh just standing there, and Tim going back and forth and micro-adjusting his limbs. Your image is pretty spot on, honestly. <laughs> the what? Oh, the image of you doing that? Of you going back and forth while I'm standing there, micro-adjusting oh. every limb. Yeah. <laughs> Ten seconds left. And three, two, and one. Okay, everyone. All right. Got one left. Oh, that was. Oh boy, guys. I don't know how you're feeling today, but this is these are these are kicking my butt. All right. So one more ten minute left, and then we have the grand finale. Okay. Whew. All right. All right, guys. <laughs> you I'm pretty sure I chose a hard standing pose for the last ten minutes. Or no, this one should be easier. No, no, okay. All right, are, right. I mean, I. these are always surprising because I don't know which ones you picked. All right, three, two, one. Oh, it's Smeagol's back. This, I remember this. I almost made this the hour one too. But then I realized our female one, we did a back pose. So I was like, oh, I'll, I'll try to find more of a front one. Mix it up. Yeah, I'm going to try to have a lot of initial lines because I think I've been drawing too stiff overall. I feel like this is what my body does when I hit my funny bone. <laughs> Yes, Ian, we will definitely be having a break before the one-hour study. Mm -hmm. So you can fill up your water jugs. Go to the bathroom. Use the bathroom. <laughs> oh, for the drawing the cats. That's what we would call it. Speed That's what we would call a speed draw. Trying to capture the kittens before they leave. Mm -hmm. Those would be like five second, <laughs> five second ones. Felix says we just let our two cats in at the same time when they're hungry and feed them at the same time. Um, Charles says mine share a bowl and the younger one likes to beat the older up. So I feed them at separate times. That's what we're trying to figure out still because... I know some people say actually feeding them right next to each other at the same time helps a lot. I guess we could try that. Um, <clears throat> yeah, Casper definitely likes to pick on Astrid a little bit. It's funny because you would think it would be the other way around where Casper is scared of Astrid since she's older, but Astrid, 
the other day too uh, casper was coming up the stairs and I, she ran under the bed right away she was like i don't want to be seen that is so strange well i don't know if any of you guys have experienced this but Astrid used to be, I always tell Josh, she was like a 10 out of 10 cat. But like right now, she's like an 8 out of 10. She's still good, but she's not as like funny or uh, silly. She doesn't play as much. She kind of dotes a lot, which I don't know if she's just jealous of the new cat or if she's been angry that there is a new presence in the house. We're trying to figure it out, but uh, we, we want to try to help her because we love little Astrid. Yeah, I think she's just a little depressed. I don't know, but I don't know if it's just... I think Casper's kitten energy and Astrid's definitely like laid back cat now. So I don't know if it's just because maybe Casper is like high energy. So as so. he gets older, I think that'll help. Well, and Astrid's morbidly obese. So I think <laughs> she, that hurts. <laughs> Astrid is not overweight. Astrid's only, what was it, five ounces overweight? And yeah, then in cat terms, it's like, dang. She's okay. <laughs> She's healthy. She's just a little sad right now. But I do try to like sit in the bedroom with her at least a couple times during the day. I'll just sit upstairs with her and read. Because like our bedroom is her favorite place right now. Where she usually likes to sit by the, we have like those little window clingers where you could, they could sit on. She doesn't sit in those anymore. Oh, I was off screen. Dang it. Sorry guys. Oh, sorry. I didn't take a look at that. Right, Ella? That's such a heart Ella says that's such a heartbreaking thing to say to him. Astrid isn't fun anymore. It is like You guys need to see how she is because we lived with this other cat, Mushi, which was my roommate Key's cat. And Mushi was I actually really liked Mushi, but she was definitely like always sad, always pissed. Uh never liked to be touched, never liked to play. Uh, always hid from people. And Astrid was the opposite. She was like this spunky, energetic little furball. And she was, she, I mean, she was definitely a weirdo, uh, but now she's like become the new Mushi, where now she's kind of sulking around the house and doesn't want to play, kind of hides. And I'm like, no, like, I, you're still a good cat, but I like your weirdness. I like your quirkiness and wanting to play a lot. I think we just got to find, I think having the new cat just really disrupted her schedule. And then we uh, moved her litter box out of my office because that's where we were going to put it. Uh, Caspers, and I think that really pissed her off. So I think it's just been a slew of things that we've been making mistakes on, and we're we're trying to rectify it essentially. All right. A little under five minutes. I know I try to play with her one on one. I'm doing like all the things. I feel like parents are now. I'm like googling what to do, but we'll see. And she is still fun though at times. Like the other day, she does the funny poses still, and she sleeps all weird. I feel like it's really rare though. I mean, Where this before morning, it was like every day. This morning she was doing the like fake smacking on me, so that was cute. Oh, that's good. Yeah. And she did the hair thing too. She hasn't done that in a while, but where she'll like brush her head all through my hair. Yeah, Felix says one of our cats also became weird a few weeks ago where she doesn't want to be pet from above and just melts away. The lower back scratching is fine. Astrid's always been weird with pets too. She doesn't really like to be pet that often. But I got her from a, um animal shelter, so I don't know if she kind of came with maybe some damage. I don't know. But like she's not, petting's kind of weird for her still. I feel a little better about this pose. Elena says, all I know, I've only really had one cat in the family, is that they really don't like changes in their life and they need their time to accumulate to new things. Or, yeah. Acclimate, I think. Yeah, I read that wrong. Sorry. But yeah, I think that's the case with Astrid too. Mm -hmm. is it was like the food bowls and then we had to move the litter box and then... We took her to a vet yeah, when we the, shouldn't have. I think the vet was probably my biggest mistake I made. I think that was traumatizing um, for her. Yeah. <laughs> Which we didn't know that that would be the case. But we took Astrid to the vet the same time we took uh, Casper. Because Casper, for sure, we knew he had worms. Uh, so we wanted to get him treated. And we were like, well, we might as well bring uh, Astrid in for like a checkup. 
Oh, she was not. She was not having any of it. Just that whole day, she was just not happy. Uh, Emery says, "New things, even objects, can give them a little anxiety." So I'm sure she'll bounce back after a while. We got a dishwasher, and my cats acted similar to Astrid for a while. Oh, good. Oh, okay, that's that makes I'm, me feel that's better. That's what I keep thinking is that – actually, and Kiri says this too. Sounds like the new cat is threatening her territory. It usually takes cats a little while to figure out their new hierarchy, especially if she's used to being top cat and now she isn't anymore. That's what – I mean, Astrid's definitely very docile. Like, she's just not a really yeah. aggressive cat. So I think Casper is kind of taking ownership a lot of the house right now. And I don't know what to do about that. I think it's just going to be kind of like it's going to work itself out. Well, I feel like Casper does have a naturally dominant personality, which I didn't think he would after the first day of him just being super skittish and throwing up everywhere. But uh, he really became more of like this, I want to play all the time. I want to be uh, cuddling all the time. Uh, Loves to run around with Astrid or like chase her, but not in like an aggressive way. He doesn't try to like attack her or anything but he just wants to play and i think for astrid she's so not even used to who is this cat so i think she's threatened by him even though he's really not threatening uh but it's just mixed signals i think um oh this is a good idea um here he says also litter boxes being moved can make them uh feel really out of place with two cats having three litter boxes throughout the house is optimal for them to feel like the space is truly theirs really I mean, can they share litter boxes? Because I've read That's what we mixed were... opinions on it. Because some people say it's okay to share and other people say it's not. But my cats growing up even, they shared a litter box and never had any issues over it. So I don't know. But oh. maybe having putting one upstairs in our bedroom? Because I no. thought about what? Do you know how... So I don't know if you guys have ever had this. Astrid, I love her. She never covers her droppings, we'll say. So she scratches the side of the bin, and it's so loud. We used to have the litter box in our room. I know, but... But it's so... It would wake me up all the time. Um, a little under 30 seconds. <gasps> Sorry, I missed the minute mark. Um, yeah, we'll see. We could set up one, though, maybe in the basement? Yeah, I think we could set one up in the basement. So litter box, rule of thumb, is one for each plus one. You know what? That could be one. You know what? We'll try it. I mean, I still think the bedroom. All right, time is. No, we're definitely not putting it in the bedroom. Ah, uh, okay. Actually, I felt better about that one. Proportion's still a little off, but that one felt better at least. Okay, so we're going to take a three minute break. So if you guys want to go to the bathroom, refresh your drink, whatever you need to do, and then we will go ahead and do our one hour study. Oh my gosh. Did you need to go up at all? Uh-uh. You're good? Okay. I'm going to run up in a sec. I'm going to get all this fixed. How are you guys all doing today? I mean, yeah, you guys have some really good advice. Yeah, okay. keep reading the advice. I'll be right back. And I fill up my jug. <laughs> I have four cats sharing a giant litter box. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, I, I do think we do, should try to get more. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, today is a really weird day for me for life drawing because I went in really excited. And I mean, this did happen in college to me too, where the results, I mean, I guess while we're doing our little break, like looking at them, I definitely can see like the struggle, the insecurity around certain places. Uh, especially with like the proportions are just if they feel off and I know that that was kind of a hard one but this one specifically I mean that back is definitely way too long and I, it's good to be able to look at your stuff and critique it uh, and like see what's wrong but I think if you're always noticing what's or like relishing in what's wrong sometimes it's hard to get out of that place where you tend to make more mistakes because that's all you're thinking about you're thinking oh I'm just it's just a bad day it's a throwaway day and I tried to do everything in my power not to sink into that mentality. So if you guys are having a little bit of that today or on any future day that you're having with drawing, try to pull yourself out. And, uh, you know, maybe it's just taking a step away from the drawing, like 
take a walk around the house, around the block, whatever you need to, and then come back down to it. Because actually some of these, I'm not actually, I don't hate this one. Uh, I think it's good to also recognize where you're doing things right. Uh, and, you know, remembering that these are just studies. This is supposed to be a training exercise altogether. So this doesn't have to be something you have to post on Instagram and be really pretty and finished and detailed. And I think that's something I have to remind myself a lot because I get too caught up into it has to look good, especially when I'm doing a live stream. I really want the results from start to finish to be, you know, the best that I can make it. And when that doesn't happen, it's just disappointing. And I think it's easy to get down on yourself for it. But we have one more long pose. So I'm going to shed all of that thought that I just had for the last few drawings. And I'm going to go in with a fresh plate. And we'll see what we can do here. Uh, Felix, okay, these 10 minute ones were not the greatest. I'm gonna need to level up for the one hour. I'm right there with you, Felix. Side by side on this one. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. We ready? Are we all ready? Whew. Which one did I pick? Oh, actually, I asked you guys to pick on Discord. I know which one won. Okay. All right. You guys ready? Tools at the ready, and we begin. Oh my. Yeah, I told you, technically he's naked, but it's safe. <laughs> so this one won the vote on Discord. I asked you guys which one you want to do for the hour pose. I gave you four different options, and this was the one that won. We just get a sliver by the leg. I see it. No, that's his calf. Is that really? Mm-hmm. Oh, never mind then, okay. <laughs> Are you like specifically I thought it looking was the for sack, it? Right? <laughs> um. I was gonna say something else about the cats, though. I was thinking about it upstairs, but I don't know. Casper was missing. Ashford was missing. <laughs> Oh, Carrie, okay, we got one of those rolling storage bins front of the bed and converted it into an oversized litter box. That's oh. a good idea. <gasps> I do think as they get to know each other more, and Casper's around a lot longer now, too, I think Astrid's going to start getting used to it. Yeah, she just needs to be confident. She just needs to communicate to him, like, I don't want to play right now. <laughs> All right, so now this pose, oh, I'm off screen again, Tim. There we go. So now for this pose, there's a lot of nuances, and especially the shadow form. So definitely pay attention to that as you go through. So I'm noticing like the knee doesn't go past his uh, torso and upper body. So I want to keep that knee, if I go straight down, the knee shouldn't go past that point. Oh, yay, Ella. I will be able to join this one. Just finished dinner. Yay! Just oh. in time. Yeah. Hopefully you're having better luck than some of us in the chat <laughs> with these uh, male poses. Uh, Carrie says another tip for helping Astrid adjust is whenever she's around the new cat, whenever she's around the new cat, give her treats so she starts associating them with positive things happening. Um, oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, we definitely should try to do that. Astrid's, again, though, she's so weird. Even treats, though, Astrid's really picky. And I've not found a treat yet that she's, like, all about. Because she'll, I mean, you've seen her do it, too. She'll sometimes just smell the treat and then walk away. Yeah. And it's, like, multiple different treat brands we've bought. And, like, all of them, she kind of just is weird. She doesn't like people food at all, which I guess is a good thing. But she won't even eat, like, any people food, really. 
She's just a little picky. Which I think is kind of my fault because I think I baby Astrid a lot though too. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Tigel. Astrid is very much a diva. It's kind of why kids scare me because I just don't. I feel like with kids you have to discipline them, and I just I can't do it. I think if we ever had kids, Tim would be the one who have to discipline because I think you're better at like being a little harsher mm -hmm. about things. In, like, a good way. <laughs> That's probably why we won't have kids. <laughs> but we'll see. Have you tried freeze-dried fish or chicken? I haven't, no. I'm trying to think before I was vegan, too, because I would always, like... I think she did like chicken McNuggets. I did give Chick Astrid like a bite of a McNugget and she liked it. Mm -hmm. So she might like chicken or something too. I don't Jake sometimes get some, so we maybe might be able to get some from him. I don't I don't think she should be eating processed human food though. Maybe the freeze dried stuff, but Maybe. My cats lose their minds over the Temptations brand cat treats. I don't know if we've tried those ones. She likes wet food. So she likes the, like, I think I have this canned chicken one she likes. Um, so usually, like, wet food's a good way to give her a treat, too, because that's, like, special for her. <laughs> Charles says my mom once uh, changed my cat's food brand, and she protested by bringing us in a live mouse. Mm-hmm. <laughs> cute uh, Unix says thanks thanks for only one hand on this one again yeah oh yeah I didn't even notice that I mean technically you guys voted for this so <laughs> I guess you guys wanted the one hander Now obviously, I think you should draw, I think this is a bamboo shoot. I, I would definitely draw it as it gives a lot of uh, clues to the shapes around it as to their placement and where they should go. He has a hairier chest than me, but my legs beat him. What are you talking about? I don't about? know. I'm just... Conversation. <laughs> Anything to add to that, Tim? No. <laughs> All right, as far arms, interesting. There's a little bit of a almost tangent with his arm approaching the pole, but it never crosses. So something to note while you're doing that part. Hannah says, my old cat loved canned tuna. Whenever we opened the can, he'd raise sound and we'd save a little for him. <laughs> Actually, tuna might be good one for Astrid, too, for like a little tree.
you don't have to draw the stool necessarily maybe it's elements of it I know when I was in life drawing I definitely did just like little hints at the top especially if the figure was interacting with it but for the most part I'd keep it relatively um, out of frame or simple over simplified even Felix conspiracy theory time. Why do cats love fish so much when they hate the water? <laughs> Good question. I'd be curious to know the answer. Yeah, no. Do you like house cats that are in the wild? Just do they jump in the water to get fish? I'm mm. guessing they don't. I wouldn't think so. If you are going to add the stool though, I do want to make a note that you want to keep the lines pretty straight because as soon as you add something that has structure into your drawing, if that structure doesn't feel sound, it'll throw off the rest of the drawing because that's usually what the eye will focus on, or at least the viewing eye will focus on. So if I add little elements here and there of the stool, I try to make sure the perspective and everything feels accurate. Something like that. Okay. Oh, apparently there are a lot of cats. Turkish fans love water. Um, oh. Enix says, look up the fishing cat if you don't know. It's adorable. Fishing kittens, oh my goodness. Whenever I see like big wild cats, like lions or bobcats or something, I always look at Astrid and I'm like, this is you. <laughs> you come from these. <laughs> oh, his, his left arm is very interesting because the light is coming from behind and in front. So it's creating this very pushed out kind of shadow that's emphasizing his uh, bicep. It's a definitely fun shadow play there. Oh yeah, these, these little cats actually go in the water and they get fish. That's cute. I didn't know cats do that. Or certain cats, I guess. Yeah. Like, their head is under the water. Sometimes it's nice filling in the background with some value so that 
uh, it makes the body feel more lit up in the places that are actually lit. Oh, Anthony says, I really want a cat, but my landlord is anti-animal. Could always sneak one. Mm -hmm. I actually had an apartment that didn't allow cats, and Astrid was snuck in. <laughs> Apparently, Jack... Enix says jaguars eat crocodiles. What? And then Hannah H says tigers also regularly bathe and spend hours of their day in the water. It's cute. Yeah, that's... I could understand the bathing part. Yeah. All right, we've got 45 minutes. Uh, I feel a little better about where this is going. So to all those looking at you, Felix... I was not feeling great about the warm-ups. I hope you're feeling better with this one. I feel like once I get the shape of most of him down, then I could talk a little more. I've been trying to be more focused for this one. So I feel like I've been doing such a, a bad job capturing these studies. So I want at least my last one to feel good. And on a high note. And now if you need to pull out your eraser and like erase big chunks of your underdrawing, once you get to a point where you feel pretty comfortable with your proportions, that's usually when I'll start doing that. So I can tell like this area I don't feel super confident in yet, uh, so I'm not going to erase until I feel like, okay, I like where the proportions are, everything feels pretty good. I'll draw some outline of the hair, but I won't overdraw the hair, like put too much focus on it. Like, it's kind of fun that it's there to work with, but I want to focus more on the shapes and forms of the body more so than have it be like a hair study. Felix says, yeah, this hour one feels way better. All right, good. Um, Harrison says, this has been a real lovely experience, especially after coming home from work. It's nice to get drawing practice in while also feeling part of a social group. Thanks for doing this live, you guys. Yeah, oh. well, thanks for coming. Sorry, I just feel like I'm so out of it today. I I struggled so bad with the early ones, and I, I get in my head then of like, ah, Tim, come on. Like, you should be better than this. But I'm glad you still enjoyed it nonetheless. I think their discussions are always fun, too. We talk about whatever comes up. Oh, these ones are weird, because I do feel like everyone's so concentrated, too, and I don't want to, like, be talking too much. <laughs> 
But I think it's okay if you talk. I just know I, I feel like I can't talk as much. I can listen, though. Like, I, I don't mind drawing while someone's talking. But I think if I have to then contribute a lot, like, I better feel pretty good at where my drawing is because I definitely move way slower. Mm -hmm. Alina says, uh, going to leave mine for this one here. My migraine and having a 10-hour work day essentially just is making the study not enjoyable for me at all. So just going to make some food and watch, make some food while listening, watching. Yeah, definitely give yourself a break. You just work 10 hours. And on top of that, having a migraine, just that's a lot. <laughs> Oops. Yeah, I used to get migraines a lot. Thankfully, I've not had one in a bit. But this is not a fun time. <laughs> Tidril says, no, pause the clock. I had to replace the lead in my pencil. I lost at least 32 seconds. Not fair. It's part of the challenge. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm glad you're doing it today, Tidril. I wasn't sure if you were uh, joining or actually participating. But I'm glad you are. Because I think... Uh, Especially hearing that maybe like it's been more of a slump for a little bit. I think maybe just having like drawing time with other people can be a good pick me up. Plus, I'm kind of curious to see uh, where your life drawing skills are at. Uh, Harrison says I find the talking is good because listening to you stops my brain from agonizing too much over my drawing. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Well, on that note, I got to see <laughs> Silence of the Lambs yesterday for the first time ever. Yeah, and Josh I really never loved seen it. it. I mean, I've been, I love just like a good detective story, like mystery. I don't know. So I, it hit all the right notes for me. So if you haven't seen it, Silence of the Lambs, really good. You know what? Um, I actually really like the sequel. I know people kind of talk bad about Red Dragon, but I actually think it's pretty good too. I think Silence of the Lambs is pretty excellent in terms of like a crime thriller. I I think it's like top tier, but I thought Red Dragon was still really good. I mean, I love Jodie Foster too, so helps. <laughs> hmm. But yeah, I've been reading... Um, this author, his name is Alex North, and I, I'm almost like doing a book a week right now, which is, I'm really happy because I had this slump where I wasn't reading for a while, but then I always forget how much just reading like a fiction or mystery novel or whatever, I can get so immersed with those. So I've been really liking it, but this author, Alex North, wrote uh, The Whisper Man, which was really an interesting story. Um, and then I'm reading his next one, and actually I forgot the name of the second book I'm reading right now. Um, I think it's is it the Shadow, maybe Shadow Man or something. But um, yeah, he writes really. I think he just writes really well, and then the the stories you get really immersed with what's going on. And it's funny because I think writers now are kind of writing almost like it's a TV show in a way. So they have like a way of writing that keeps you really. <laughs> enthralled with it um yeah i believe that right but then after these i'm like i don't know what to read next i was really i want to read where the crawdads sing just because i've heard so many people talk about that one part of me would like to go back to older books like i would love to read lord of the rings again but that's just a huge endeavor so i don't know yet i'm liking these like detective mystery murder ones right now yeah so if you guys have any that you think Josh should read? Yeah. Let him know. Because, like, I love Stephen King. I've not read his, la like, newer books within the last, like, five years. So I'd like to read some of those even, too. So if you know a good Stephen King one, I don't know. I'm just on a reading kick right now, and I want to keep it going. Oh, yeah, then, Kira, you might have some good Stephen King recommendations if you're on a reading binge with him. Because also, I want to read The Shining. That's the other one, too. I've never read The Shining. Obviously, I've seen the movie. But that's one, too, I hear that the movie... You were saying that, Tim, right? The movie is very different from the book. Yeah, Stephen King was actually pissed when he first saw the movie. 
because uh, Kubrick really took liberties with a lot of things. Just finished his new book, Later, which is a crime mystery. It was great. Later in Joyland. Yeah, I saw Later because actually I just got a Kindle finally. Um, well, I had one in the past, but I lost it. But I got a Kindle again. And as much as I like physically reading a book, just sometimes it's nice to have a little device that has all of them on it. And I saw, yeah, Later was like, you know, top seller right now. And I'm like, I really should try reading that one. So yeah, Kira, you might like Alex North then too. The second one I don't know much about yet, but I thought Whisperman was excellent. And I always like books too. Like he does a good way of describing their thoughts, why they're processing it. It definitely was a lot about father and son relationships, which is interesting. It was a big part of the book. And you got to see it from like three different perspectives. So it was just interesting to get that kind of monologue from each character and how their relationships were different and what they wanted from it, stuff like that. I don't know. It's just an interesting, interesting read. I'm going to add these. I'm going to add these recommendations to my little list of things I want to read. Uh, so now I'm getting into the second pass where I can go a bit darker and push some of these original uh, lines and kind of look for those shadow shapes and those forms that I can clean up. All right, now I feel like I can talk more. Ooh. Okay, so I add it. So for those of you who know, I, I love movies, I love film, and I've been really diving into like obscure films more lately. Uh, two weekends ago, I watched El Topo, which was like my last Hodorowski movie to watch, and then on Saturday, I watched this animation uh, film that. Uh, it was part of this like greatest animated films of all time and like how they changed animation and this one was called Belladonna Belladonna maybe of sadness and it's uh, it's interesting because it was sold as like a watercolor uh, sometimes still images sometimes moving now I was very curious about the look of it because it looked very uh, art deco it had a kind of or art nouveau it definitely felt very uh, mooka inspired but then watching it this is something i would not recommend for younger people because it is it is heavy on the sexual themes and i would say 60 percent of it felt like watching softcore and that is something that i was not expecting so as much as i did appreciate some of the watercolor uh, musings and uh, the way that certain, you know, animation uh, flowed into one another. And there were definitely some really good stills, too. But uh, I, I, I feel like this might be one of those where people talk so highly of it uh, because it has more of that cult classic feel around it. But honestly, I, I thought it was just all, like, not even just all right. I thought it was, it was hard, it was like, hard to get through the actual film experience of like the story because sometimes it was so slow and so kind of poorly paced and uh, it was so sexually a uh, charge that at some points I'm like this feels like I should be closing the curtains on my living room because I don't want the neighbor seeing that I'm watching this uh, but uh, I have been trying to get into more of those obscure films I even went to this website called critiquer where they Basically, you, you rate films, and then they will suggest films that you may enjoy based on your ratings of other films. I did find out my least favorite movie of all time is Tusk, uh, the horror film by Kevin Smith. I think it is the 
absolute worst thing uh, <laughs> that cinema has ever produced. So I would never, ever, ever recommend that to anyone. Not even as like a so bad it's funny. It's just, it's so bad. Uh, but it has been recommending some interesting ones to me. So we'll see. I know, and we just watched the French, or no, not French, the Italian remake of Pinocchio. It's live action. And it was very, uh, visually, it was gorgeous. It was stunning at a lot of moments. It was very dry. It felt like the characters didn't really have much emotion. But if you view it more as a like visual experience, I definitely think it's worth it. But I wouldn't go into it feeling like wanting like deep character arcs or any of that. Uh, it's pretty standard. But a lot of the fantasy elements were really turned up, and they just ran with it. And I'm, I'm glad they did because it really added to it. Mm -hmm. Wait, Emery says, I don't know if anyone recommended it, but Wheel of Time is great. Is it the series by Robert Jordan? Because, I mean, it's a 15, looks like 15 book series right now. Yeah. I mean, I've not got really into a series in a while, so it'd be kind of cool. I'm going to put this to my, on my wish list. It's been a while since I've done fantasy too, so that'll be fun. All right, I put Sacrament by Clive Barker in my list too. Wait, why do I know that name, Clive Barker? Did he make Hellboy? Or not Hellboy, Hellraiser? Clive Barker. That sounds so familiar. He is a, he is a producer. But he wrote books, too. Yeah, he did Hellraiser. <gasps> did he really? Yeah. Man, there are some weird parts of my brain where I'll... I haven't even seen Hellraiser, but for some reason I knew he... <laughs> uh like that deep cinephile memory that I have. Oh, and he is, he's actually gay. Well, yeah, he made Hellraiser. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever watch Hellraiser? No, that's what I just said. Oh, right. I'm sorry. I was like zoned out reading the Google thing. Huh, interesting. Sorry, kind of, kind of just didn't listen. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, actually, I really like the Hellraiser movies. They're a little gross, but... I hear the first one's great. I hear the rest are trash. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I definitely want to watch the first one. It's but... kind of like a lot of series. Actually, Halloween, I think the first two were great, and then it kind of started going a little downhill with that series even. Yeah, I agree. You know what? There's so much concept I like about Halloween 3, but yeah, overall, I don't think it's that great. But I, you know I, I would still watch it. I feel like it's a guilty pleasure. Bear and the Nightingale series... Ooh, it's a trilogy. Oh, you guys have so many good recommendations. This is making me want to like go upstairs and read. I think after this I might do that. Because I have, there's an app, it's called, what's the name of this one? I just have like the widgets, I don't see the name. It's called Forest. And you literally just like set a timer and you can't do anything else. Cause if you do anything else on your phone, it'll stop. But the longer you do it, you grow trees and they get added to your little garden. And then you can actually earn coins in the app that you can use to spend on real life trees they'll plant. So I'm like, it kind of feels yeah, I do like, that. like a cool way to time things out throughout the day. Anthony says, "Did you ever watch the movie about Van Gogh, which was animated in his heart in his art style?" I did. Loving Vincent. Was that the one uh, I saw with you, or no? No, we saw the one with William Defoe. That was oh, called. Right. Oh boy, what was that one called? To Infinity or Eternity? 
We saw both. Or at least I saw the oil painting one. Uh, I mean, obviously visual, there's some really awesome elements, but it, it kind of, when I hate to say this, I feel like it relies a little too heavily on the style where I felt like the substance of the story was lacking. And I just, I really think it could have been a masterpiece if it really worked on the, the story aspect as well. And I know it's supposed to be like a biopic, somewhat biopic of Van Gogh and his life, but I remember watching it being like, uh, it, it just felt lacking in a lot of ways. And I think you can kind of tell some of the style parts even. Um, a lot of them you could tell were just painted over like live shots of the the scenes, which is fine. I realize that's a very difficult thing to do. But yeah, it, it didn't quite work for me all the way. Uh, I actually thought there were moments of uh, to Eternity that were great. I thought the music especially, I, I listened to that on Spotify from time to time. Um, but even that one, I think there were moments that felt like that you had to like sit through and it wasn't as engaging. I haven't really seen a Vincent Van Gogh uh, film or a movie that I really felt like uh, did a great job. You know, I, I, I would say both of them did good, but I, did, I don't think either of them did great, you know. Ian says it's not the kind of book you're talking about, but I really enjoyed To Sleep in a Sea of Stars by Christopher Poloni. It's an 900-page adult sci-fi book which Wait, explores first contact. Christopher Poloni, he wrote Aragon, right? Um, I think so, yeah. That name sounds really familiar. Hang on. Which we, Don't talk bad about the movie. I know Tishel actually really likes the movie. <laughs> well, actually, I think someone else is just talking about that in the chat even. Really? Uh, you know, Tigel, I, I feel like it's a guilty pleasure, <laughs> even though you don't want to admit it. Uh, I really liked the book. I really like Aragon. Yeah, the book was great. You know what's, what kind of was a bummer, though? I didn't read the second one yet because it was at the time where the movie was coming out. I was like, oh, I'll watch the movie and then I'll, wa I'll read the second one. But I, I really disliked the movie so much that I actually stopped reading the series because of it. it like, it killed it for me, sadly. Honestly, I might actually read the series. There's four books in it too, and I've I've not gone past them. I most might do it. I'm gonna read all of them all. Oh, are you now? I put that on my wish list as well. But I actually, I really, I am okay with sci-fi reading. Um, it was Silo. Hang on, there's these one books I really liked, and they were sci-fi. How can you see your books? I want to see my Kindle library. Yeah, I'm, oops. Well, whoops. <laughs> I just clicked the um, one click buy thing on Amazon by accident and I just purchased Aragon. <laughs> uh. I can cancel it right away. I'm not ready to buy it quite yet. Still reading another book. Yeah, I'm trying to set that up for Josh. Where, and I don't know if you guys do this either, but yeah, not only with books, but like video games or whatever, where you can't buy a new one until you finish whatever one you're currently working on. You know, it's a good way to help save money. Motivating too. Yeah, I'm like, I always like having the next book set up so that. I'm always afraid I'm going to finish a book and then I won't be able to, like, I don't know, buy the next book yet or I'll be, like, on an airplane and I finish it. <laughs> and then what happens? That's it. End game. Game over. I guess. Oh, my. I wanted to find the one book I The one book I read was so good. Okay, I never mind. I, I can do this on my Kindle, but I don't know how to just find my Kindle library on the website. <laughs> K 
Okay, guys, as we approach the 20 minutes here, really try to step into doing some of the detail work if possible, if you're at that stage. Because detailing definitely tends to go a little slower, and I want to make sure you guys are giving yourself enough time to get some nice finishing touches. So push those shadows, amplify those values. He also has pretty push out obliques, so you can give those some nice shadow work too. Oh, I think I found it. Actually, I liked Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children, but that was another series I kind of stopped reading then. But I was really liking it. After the movie? Honestly, probably the movie messed it up for me a little bit. Yeah. Tim Burton really hasn't been as impressive as he used to be for me. Yes, I found it. Hugh Hoey, it was the Silo series. I liked those books. There's three of them, and I remember I loved those. I read them back in like 2015, it looks like, I think I read it. Those were really good. <laughs> Tigel says, oh, no, no. I know very well Aragon is a bad movie, but it's more of a nostalgia thing. I fell in love with the oh. VFX because of the dragon, and it was one of the first fantasy things I ever saw. So because it introduced me to a whole bunch of stuff I love now, I still look at it fondly. Oh. And I do love Jeremy Irons. <laughs> that makes way more sense then. I always thought you were like an adamant defender of it. And I was like, well, you know, we each have those movies. I mean, I definitely have movies too where I'm like, I can acknowledge its faults, but I just, I really enjoy it. Like uh, Beauty and the Beast 2, Enchanted Christmas. I don't care what people say. I, I think it's great. <laughs> I know there's parts where the animation are really bad, but uh, I think it's great. <laughs> but yeah, I'm going to put this one in. Hugh. Holy. Yeah, Hugh, Hugh Holy. Oh, I just spelled his name wrong. No, I did it right. But that was a sci-fi series that I really liked. I guess when I say sci-fi, it's not... It's like apocalyptic sci-fi, I guess. It's still got a little space, but it's like... It was just good. The third one wasn't as great. I'm going to reread Aragon. Yeah. I'm going to read the new ones. Yeah, I'll put that in my little list. And that's an easier read, too. Felix, I have a soft spot for never-ending story. I know the movie isn't the best, but it's ironic. I feel the same way about that. Like, when I watched it, I was like, you know, I know there's parts that are really choppy, but I still really like what I'm viewing. I want to read the book. There's a book? It's Yeah, it's based off a story. Oh, yeah. I actually didn't know that. Oh, same way. I mean, honestly, the 80s revival of fantasy movies was my favorite era of fantasy. So, like, give me Legend, give me Willow, give me Pan, or not uh, Pan's Labyrinth, The Labyrinth. Uh, I didn't think the original Dark Crystal was that great, but I actually really enjoyed the Netflix series. I just like, or even, uh, what were the other movies? Oh, even animation, like Secret of Nim and Last Unicorn. 
I liked when fantasy was dark. And it's funny because you almost saw Disney like dip their toe in it with Black Cauldron and then immediately dip out. And now it's like the weird, uh, what's that? The redheaded stepchild syndrome where they like rarely talk about it. They don't almost acknowledge that they were the ones that made it, which is a shame. Because I think even though it did have some faults too, uh, it really was one of their darkest films ever. And I'm glad that they were willing to explore that uh, category. Because I feel like, um, yeah, you know what? I love the golden age of Disney, so I'm not going to rep on the 90s Disney. But like modern Disney feels very like pandery, feels very uh, like do what will sell rather than what feels like a passion project. None of them really feel authentic anymore. I don't know if you guys feel that way too, uh, especially with the remakes. It just, everyone just felt more and more disappointing. I'm at the point where I told Josh, I'm I'm never seeing another one. <laughs> I just, I never will watch another Disney remake. I feel like we did that and then was it Dumbo? I can't remember which one we were like, let's just try it. We were like, we're never going to watch these again. And then we... It was Aladdin. Was we watched Aladdin, Aladdin okay. but we were both pretty... I mean, admittedly, we got kind of high before we went to go see it because it was like the day before a uh, convention. We're like, you know what? There's nothing else playing. Let's just enjoy it to the best that we can. And we went and I, I have to be honest, I really disliked it. Uh, there was very little I can say positive about it in my mind. And then we were like done. We were done with Disney remakes. And then Dumbo came out and we were like, okay, we'll give it a try because... <laughs> It's Tim Burton. There's some carnival themes to it. Dumbo's really cute. Like, I don't know how much they can uh, mess this one up, really, because I feel like it's a pretty easy cut-and-paste story. But, ooh, that, that, yeah. was, that was rough. And I feel bad because I really, I, you know, I really like Tim Burton, and I, I like what he did for film in general. And a lot of us 90s kids, I mean, Tim Burton was kind of like a, a hero for, especially like the artsy ones or the, like the, the kids that felt a little weird maybe. Uh, Tim Burton movies were like an escape. Uh, and then I think the one that, that really pushed me over the edge is we were at a convention. Were you at this one at Andrew's house? Yeah. Where, oh, yeah, with Lion King. Yes. They decided to watch the oh, Lion King yeah. remake and that was a chore Oh, to get through. I'm really sorry if any of you really like Disney remakes. I just have not found comfort watching them. I feel uh, very strongly uh, about film, and I feel even more strongly about saying when I don't like something. Uh, but, you know, doing it in a respectful way. I just, man, it just really lacks life. It feels like it's lacking um, character arc. It's just lacking... It's it's just lacking. It's just period. Lacking. <laughs> uh, it it really does need to find that heart that it used to. And I think you find pockets of it within certain Disney films. Like I think Moana definitely had some heart to it. Uh, I haven't seen Raya yet in the Last Dragon, but I've heard there's some good moments. Um, even with Pixar, I would say it's kind of lost some of that you know that soul that it used to have. And then when I watched actually when I watched Soul the movie. Uh, I felt like half of the time it was there. I really enjoyed a lot of parts of Soul, and ironically, it were the it wasn't the ones with Tina Fey. Even though I love Tina Fey, mm -hmm. I actually think those were kind of the weaker parts for me. I really like the moments where it's just him as a human, and you know, getting to know him, his story, and uh, especially the ending where. Well, I'm, I'm not actually. You know what? I'm not going to ruin anything. But I thought it it had a really nice message. It was one of those that like bothered me at first. Because I was like, wait, no, that's not that's not right. And then after I thought about it, I was like, ah, no, that that's definitely, I think, the right way to think about life and uh, the lesson they were going for. I agree with you, Felix. Felix says Cinderella was nice, but basically all the other one, all, all the other remakes suck. Yes, that's yeah. exactly what I say. I think Cinderella was excellent in terms of like a remake of a Disney film. It like amplified it. It elevated the animation film. And I was so excited for all the other ones after Cinderella because I was like, oh, man, just imagine when they do Beauty and the Beast and uh, like the ones that were my favorite. And then now, like hearing about <laughs> any Disney remake, I'm always like cringing. I'm always like, ah, oh, just what are they going to do this time? And like even Little Mermaid. I love Little Mermaid. I don't think I'll go see it. And even Mulan. I actually really like Mulan. And I hear there's talks about them doing, uh, what was it, Hercules? And even though I love the animation, I just, I can't 
I can't I can't do it. I just don't think I could do it. Um, and then it says, I watched Soul, and all I could think about was that I'd watched that movie six times before. <laughs> well, that too. Yeah. It's I mean, very... Pixar kind of has lost their, like, I guess, steam with storytelling. Because even the... Um, What's that new one they're coming out with? The uh, like, the sea creature boys. Oh, I forgot what it's called. But everyone in the comments, like almost every comment I saw, was people giving a prediction of what the story is going to be. Just because they can already, you can kind of tell from the trailer to what's going to happen. I mean, we'll see. Because yeah, I, think, I, uh, I think it's not fair to judge a movie that hasn't come out or one that you haven't seen yet. Uh, and I do think Soul did a lot of things right. But I think whenever it was the main character and Tina Fey's character, it felt like the same old formula of like quir- quirky characters that are opposites and they have to learn to uh, basically walk in each other's shoes to understand where their perspective's coming from and it changes their own perspective in the end. Yes, we've seen that with Toy Story, Monsters, Inc., Finding Nemo. Like they all have that same structure. And I, I can see why it's frustrating to a lot of people uh, or ooh, I hate to even admit this, but even Up, same thing. You know, it's like different personalities. They learn to love each other. But Up, I think, actually did it the best out of all of them. Um, and maybe Monsters, Inc. I thought the original Monsters, Inc. did a really good job at it, too. But yeah, I think animation film in general uh, has become very safe. Oh, what did I just watch that talked about this? where they were talking about how movies nowadays have so much money behind it, so much of the producer's input and needing a return on their investments, that that's why a lot of film nowadays does feel very predictable, very safe, very beat by beat. And it's not going to be until we have more of these creative minds that are, are creating not for a financial gain, but more for a creative outlet that we're going to see those type of movies. And we do. So I don't want to discourage you because if you do Google searches, you can find weird uh, movies that feel out of the box. I mean, even with Belladonna, even though I wouldn't recommend it, it's definitely out of the box. <laughs> like, I don't think you'll know where it's going. I love Hodorowski. If you guys like weird trippy movies, I would definitely watch Holy Mountain. I think it's something you'll never see coming. I, I think it is literally the weirdest movie I've ever seen, but still holds you know, itself uh, on its on its story and its context. Because I think some weird movies are just weird to be weird. And I feel bad because sometimes I drag Josh into watching some of those. And yeah, they're not all great, but sometimes I just enjoy it for the fact that it's different. I think we're, we're in a culture where so much is propagated by the same and we want more of the same, more of what's expected. And I think that's where you see a lot of this nostalgia kick come from, especially in millennials. Uh, and I think we we need to push and advocate for for new and different and even if it's not the best in terms of its outcome like even if you're you watch the thing and you're like "Uh, it was all right it was kind of weak in other areas at least it was new at least it was something different Uh, that's kind of my philosophy with film that's why I, I refuse to watch any Disney remake I refuse to watch uh, Star Wars remakes, or not remakes, but sequels. I, I haven't seen a superhero movie in a few years, and I refuse to see any new one. <laughs> and then my best friend Kat, her and I have like the opposite taste in movies. So if it's formulated and pretty generic, Kat will probably love it. And she'll always tell me like, oh no, you got to see the new Mulan. It was so good. And I'm like, if you really liked it. <laughs> <laughs> It's usually, and she'll admit, she'll laugh at herself too. And she'll be like, ah, Tim, you just like that weird nonsense. And I'm like, yeah, you're not wrong. Uh, but if Kat really likes a movie, it's a good sign that I won't like it. But then when she really dislikes a superhero movie, then for sure I won't see it. She hated the new Wonder Woman. Clear red flag that I should not watch the new Wonder Woman movie. <laughs> um, I don't know how you guys feel about superhero movies in general, but that's just those are my hot takes. Uh, and if you guys have any weird, obscure movie recommendations, I would love to hear them. Yeah, those are Tim's. I mean, honestly, some of them I've enjoyed. Yeah, you like Perfect anything, Blue. Yeah, if anything, too, I think they stick with you. A lot of the ones I've seen, they do stick. Yeah. So they do. They have something that they are different, so I think that's why they are something that you remember a lot more often. And I think as a visual artist, 
I think when you watch something new and different, that sticks with you more. And then when you put that into your art, it's kind of like an outlet. It's like a stream of consciousness into what you're creating. And I do feel like then just by contrast, you'll be creating things that are different because everyone's kind of creating the same, you know, visuals because everyone's looking at the same visuals. But if you're looking outside of the box and you're kind of trying to surprise uh, yourself and your audience by, you know, getting into what's new, what's different, uh, I think that's how you can kind of get ahead nowadays. Oh, Ian says, a series of unfortunate events is definitely a childhood favorite, and I eventually want to get a set of the Greek hardback editions once I'm confident enough with speaking it. I liked those books a lot as a kid. We actually, me and my sister Same. both got really into those together, so it was kind of fun to like talk about them with her. Yeah, those were great. Actually, you know what? I like the Netflix series. I didn't like the first season as much as I like the later ones. Mm -hmm. It took me a while. It took me a while to get onto the humor that they were going oh, for. Oh, the Netflix series? Yeah. I actually liked it. Yeah, I thought they yeah. did a pretty good job with it. I mean, it, I think anything could be better, but I thought for... It was better did, than the I movie. I it was pretty good. I think casting was maybe a little off in some places, but it still worked out well. Yeah, definitely with Claws. It did not feel like the nerdy short kid to me. Uh, Ian also says the Marvel stuff recently have been pretty good, and I'm looking forward to the Suicide Squad and the Batman from DC. Yeah, because there is the Batman, the Robert Pattinson one that I don't know if we, do you want to see it. No, not really. I'm I'm sure it'll be like a good blockbuster. I just. I, I don't know. It just doesn't do it for me anymore. But I did hear the new Avenger movies were great. Like, everyone that I talked to says they are really great. So I, I can't even talk bad about them because I haven't seen them. And I think I've it's never, ridiculous when people talk bad about a film that they haven't seen. So I'm not going to be one of those people. Yeah, I've just never been too much. I've not really been too much of a fan of the superhero ones either. I think the last one I saw was the Spider-Man Homecoming one with, what is his name? Tom Holland. I never even saw the second one in that, though, that came out. I see. I didn't even see that one. Oh, you know what, though? I did see Into the Spider-Verse. Oh, But yeah, I kind of put that more in, like, an animation category than a superhero one. But I thought that one was pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm sorry, it's, like, at 3 minutes 30 seconds, roughly? Uh, okay. Hmm. <laughs> Ursonette says, watch Life with Eddie Murphy. It's one of his older movies that no one talks about, but is, it's hilarious. I have not heard of that yeah, one. Yeah, I don't think I've seen that one. <laughs> Tidgel, I love Emma Watson, but Jesus Christ, the Beauty and the Beast movie. When she started singing, the auto-tune threw me off instantly. The original soundtrack is so good. I have a lot of thoughts about the, <laughs> the Beauty and the Beast remake. <laughs> <laughs> um, I like the orchestrated soundtrack. Some of the actual like orchestration they had for it. I forgot who did was the artist for that, but I thought that stuff was okay. But the actual singing was a little off. Speaking of just things that are lacking, <laughs> the lion. You know what? Actually, I'm not going to talk too bad about Beauty Music remake. I know a lot yeah. of people like it. And it doesn't make me feel better just, you know, crapping on someone's favorite type of film. It wasn't your film, but does I it mean... It wasn't my type of film. <laughs> yeah. And I have to admit, I was really frustrated watching it in the theater, like really frustrated. And then leaving, I remember all my roommates and I were like, that was terrible. That was not worth getting, like we should request our money back. Uh, that was bad. But yeah, I'm not going to smack talk it though. Charles says the Marvel TV series in Disney Plus have been really good recently. I know what is the one that Kat's really into? She um, likes The Mandalorian and then WandaVision. WandaVision, that's the Marvel, right? That's Marvel? Yeah. And I'm super excited for the long waited Black Widow movie. I didn't know they were making a Black Widow movie. Like I said, Actually, I, I like Black Widow. I think a lot of people really enjoy Marvel stuff, so I try not to, you know, dog on it too much. I just feel like. It is so formulaic. I think I was watching Iron Man 3 back in the day with like a group of people and it was just, I just didn't enjoy my experience with it. 
I, and I feel like it's been kind of the same experience that I have with superhero movies every single time, where you can kind of predict what's going to happen, what's going to go on, where their you know beats will be, where the climax will happen. Got one minute left. Uh, but I mean, if the way that I look at movies is, if it entertains someone, it really gives someone joy. I'm not going to take that away from them. Not not even that I could. But I'm not going to just sit here and you know smack talk something that someone like it really they really enjoyed it. And I think I think about my nieces who really enjoyed Frozen. I didn't really enjoy Frozen, but watching them get so excited and have like the sisterly bond because of it, I'm not going to step in and be like, "Oh, you girls shouldn't really like this movie," because you know, and then point out what I felt about it. So I think the same thing could be said about Marvel and all these other movies that maybe I don't care for them, but then just don't don't recommend them to people. Talk about the things you do like. You know, I'll recommend movies that I think are worth watching, and who knows, maybe you'll be like, this person's taste is opposite of mine, quite terrible, <laughs> and I respect that too. All right, Brad, time up. Uh, okay, well, we'll see how you guys feel about it. I definitely like certain aspects of mine, uh, I definitely like some of the lighting going on. But if you want to finish up and post in the Discord channel, there's a follow along stream channel. That is where I'll be grabbing all of my critique ones. And I think for my own, uh, yeah, I think I probably could have pushed a little more detail in some of these unfinished areas, like the foot. Uh, but I really wanted to get the proportion feeling right in the body because I, I was feeling so bad with my previous ones that I really wanted to at least acknowledge uh, some good proportion work and good underlying anatomy. So I feel like I, I hit some of that, but there's definitely areas that could be reworked a little bit. Um, but overall, you know what, I'm not going to be mad at myself. I feel like I had a really bad start to the stream in terms of my execution. And if this is my outcome within that, I, I can't be mad at this. Yeah, it came out really good. His leg is so funky too. The more I kept looking at it, yeah, it definitely like has that proportion distortion. Yeah, almost looks like it's like crooked. Mm -hmm. It's all that perspective. It'll do that to you. Oof. So I hope you guys felt you know decent about it. Got some good chat in. Perfect. Actually, I'm gonna use the bathroom really quick. Okay. While you get everything set up. You can just scooch my laptop. I'll be quick. Whew. Okay, sorry, I keep working even after the time zone. So here was mine. Now let me see. Yeah, especially looking far away from it. Yeah, I definitely like some of the torso elements. His head is though way too big now that I'm really looking at it far away. Yeah, and I feel like my drawing's more like hunched over and it should be more a little lifted up. It's always kind of interesting looking at your drawing further away. It gives you a better perspective on uh, what was working and what was not. But when you're so close to your drawing, I just read this analogy of uh, sometimes when you're so close at something, she like had a phone and she held it close to uh, like a doorknob or something. And she's like, see how it's blurry and it's hard to see? It's because when you're so close up to something, you're so involved with it, it's hard to see things clearly. But if you take a step back, she held the phone further away and it focused. And you could see not only the doorknob better, but you could see the whole picture better. And I think that's a great analogy for art as well. I think sometimes we're so zoomed in that uh, we don't see the mistakes because we're so close to it. Uh, but if we take a step away from it, we can start to see, oh, yeah, this needs to be edited here. Or, uh, yeah, there's something wrong in this area that I think could be adjusted. So anyways, let's go ahead and switch over. I'll give Josh the nice chair here. Whew. Thanks for sticking it out with me. Let's see here. All right, we'll give Josh his laptop. So I'm going to go on the Discord and I'm going to go down one by one. And if you want to put or make a mention when you post your drawing, uh, something that you felt worked or didn't work, or uh, give me some feedback as to what you 
uh, want critiqued maybe even, or what you focused on. Okay. Should I have to make a new file here? I'm just gonna switch this all out here. Well, let me get all set up. Okay. We're gonna turn that off. And push this here. Okay. Get the timer out of there. All right, so Tijal, we're starting off with you. And then Josh will read off the comments you have. Oh, yes. Oh, you know what? This is in grayscale. Hold on. So if you'd like, you can always just leave a little message to when you post it. If there's something that you wanted to add to your post. Um, Tijal says, okay, usually I get way too many ideas when doing live drawing sessions. So instead of focusing on the anatomy <laughs> and stuff, I started focusing on the story. Whoops. I mean, there's some fun elements here. I actually like the toe that's dipping into the world, whatever that is. Uh, you know, I felt like there is actually a lot of good shading elements to this. I feel like you definitely got some of this portion here looking really good. Some of the proportions on this leg too, which was a little more difficult. I feel like you and I had the same issue of making the head a little too big. I think because his hair takes up so much of the frame that we tend to make it a little larger as well. And then maybe if just make that hand just a little bigger on the top side. You know, overall this is pretty fun though. And I like the little, you know, graphic elements you added. If anything, Tizzle, I think my my critique for you would be to try taking a darker pencil and, you know, pushing some of those dark areas. Like on this leg, I would love to see some of the dark values that is on the reference as well. But overall, I actually think this is a really good job. So Good job, Tijel. Look nice, at you Tijl. joining in and kicking butt. All right, next up. Uh, you, Nick. So I went for trying proportions, and I'm kind of happy. But once again, shading broke my back. Last <laughs> time, you liked my Picasso-esque shading. Though, got to say, that is just because I can't do proper gradients. Uh, oh, and I should mention, I know a lot of people can't stay for the critique session. So if you have to go, if you could leave a like before you head out, it definitely helps the YouTube algorithm and it encourages me to do more of these live streams. Um, but okay, let's look at yours. You know, I think there are some elements here that work with that Picasso shading, but I think when doing a life drawing study, I would push into trying to do more realism, and then if it happens to turn into more of a stylized recreation, I think that's fine. But I think what I can tell, you know what, oh, does it not work when I zoom in? Hold on, let me see here. Yeah, I have to stay zoomed out, I think. Just so you guys can see what I'm doing. Oh, my head's too big. <laughs> so I won't zoom in too much, but specifically, I think looking at the nipple, it feels very graphic, like very plastered. I think what helps is having a softer outline. You know, let me do it on a new layer. And I think a lot of people are so nervous drawing nipples that they often turn out looking either too graphic or not realistic. And I think just having a very soft, not outline nipple is the best way to go. And to have just some very light shading. Because remember, there is a little point on the actual uh, nipple itself that will get some lighting. And you can see it in the reference too. You know, it's a pretty stark uh, reflection of the lighting. Actually, that's Oh, I can't zoom in though. There we go. So you can see before and after how before it looks like an outline, it looks like a ring around the nipple, where afterwards it feels more in uh, embedded in the body itself and it feels more natural. Uh, the proportions definitely feel a little stiff. I think especially with this leg down here feels the most off to me. I think, you know, straightening out that back leg uh, could have helped out with uh, the wonkiness here. Oops. Yeah, pushing it forward. Um, I feel like you did some good job with understanding where some of the value placement goes, but I do agree with you. It, the blending feels a little off, so that's something I would definitely encourage you to work on as well. And I, I do like that you're going dark, but just remember 
like when you go dark, if there's no bounce light, I wouldn't include it too much, especially in there. Because uh, otherwise it can start looking metallic really fast when you have a lot of dark and light values pushed up against each other. So you want it to feel still like natural. But overall, I would say this is a good job. And thank you for, for joining us today. Good work, Unic. Next we have Cats and Hats. Uh, first time joining the live stream. I feel oh, like welcome. the head and some of the shadings could be better, but either way, I'm really happy. Well, thanks for joining. Yeah, I think for yours, there is some nice, delicate handling of the value transitions, and I think that is working. I think for you, my challenge for you would be definitely proportions the next time you do a life drawing session. So I feel like this feels all relatively in proportion with one another, but then this arm feels really big compared to the rest of the body. And I think the head feels a little small. Or I think because the head just needs to be pushed forward a bit too. But yeah, this arm feels really, really big. And I think it makes the whole rest of the upper body stretch out longer than it really should. Uh, and I think when it comes to like the shading on the leg, pull some of that shading back up. You can kind of see it in the reference, there's like that shadow being casted from the pole he's holding. And I think capturing that would just give a little bit more of a indication as to where the light source is coming from. Or even like the second very, very subtle shadow uh, on his actual abdomens that would indicate you know where that cut is because right now it just looks like one giant cut on the outside and then this feels very matte and empty um, yeah besides that I think there there's some good elements here but I would definitely say proportions would be the thing that I would uh, work on next time more than anything but thank you and good job next up we have Lane if Lane. I'm okay with it, I need to work on my values. Well, hello, Lane. Thanks for joining again. Um, oh, I love, I mean, the, you can feel the energy in this for sure. Uh, I love that you have no problem going dark and it feels almost like an energy of like, it almost feels aggressive in a, a little way. Uh, yeah, I would say the proportions just feel a little off in areas. I think like making the the, t the middle section a little elongated and I think even though I can tell you like going with the darks maybe even working on tone paper and then having your darks go dark but then pulling out like a white charcoal pencil or some kind of a white to like really push those highlights because I can feel that it would it would really emphasize like that lighting on that shoulder or that bicep or like the back of the arm I can kind of see it here but it feels very much like a straight rectangle of light where if you see in the reference it's very like cut in like a wave pattern because of the muscle that's turning on his arm so i would just you know focus on that as well um and i think the bench feels uh very big to me i think just making that a little smaller but i think you have like the opposite of problem that a lot of ours have where you have no problem going dark <laughs> i think uh it's just now collecting it even uh, further but good job, and thank you for joining us today, Lane. It's always nice knowing you're here. Um, next up we have uh, Unix says, this is my friends. She's not in the server, and I kind of made her join. It's her first time on here. <laughs> she says she was stressed the whole time, but she had fun. Oh, uh, well, welcome to the server. Thank <laughs> you for joining. I, I think with yours, there you can tell that you have a lot of confidence in shading. I think where it, the pressure may have gotten to a little bit when feeling stressed working on this is proportions because I can definitely feel a lot of things are just a little off uh, in most of the areas. And I think it, it stems from, I think, having um, the middle section, the torso area and the lower section. If you can make that a strong foundation, I feel like the arms and legs can be built off of that. And it, it's very easy then to tell if things feel out of proportion. And I think with my own, that's why I really focused on that midsection in the chest and the hips so that everything branching off of that, his head, arms, and legs, I can build it off in proportion to uh, that. So I feel like this is a little too thin. Uh, I think the arms are a bit too big. And I think a lot of things just need to be like moved over a little bit. And especially if you're working digitally, I don't think it's that much of a cheat if you want to use liquify. If you can kind of tell that things are slightly off, I would just push them and mold it to the 
to be in the area you want. I think it's good not to rely on it for sure because I, I do see a lot of artists, you know, get overly reliant on using those quick tricks in digital media. But I think it's good if you can see it to like edit it as you go. Uh, and I think especially with like this, the back was where it's probably the lightest on his whole body, maybe the back of the arm here, that little sliver. So I think pushing that light all the way up and, you know, arching that back more, giving more of that lean. Because then I think it's easier to tell the position of the body too when you really feel the gesture of the, the position in the pose. Where for years I feel like it's a little stiff and it doesn't feel, like I can't tell if he's sitting up straight but he has his like neck straight forward or if he's like leaned over but the head's pulled up. Uh, so just something that I would recommend is taking a step back from the drawing and like really look side by side comparing the reference to uh, your drawing. So. Thanks again for joining. I hope you had a good first time on the, the stream. Good one. Thanks for joining us. Next up we have Pinlin, uh, first time joining. Lots of first timers this this yeah. week. Uh, the composition is a little off. I have my <clears throat> I have my sketchbook flat on the table and the angle is a bit different than looking straight on top. Yep. The right leg should be bent a bit less. I know Tim has that same issue sometimes same too. Same issue. Um, I agree. Yeah, I think the bend is a little too much. It's just like those little, you know, tweaks that can really make it feel in uh, close relation to the reference. Um, yeah, overall, I can I can definitely tell the pose. I definitely feel the, the seatedness of it. I would say some of the values get a little lost in some areas. Like I don't know exactly what's going on with his belly. Uh, I think when drawing like body hair, I think just having like really short strokes that go in the same direction and movement as it is naturally can help because otherwise this looks like a like a block or like a straight line rather than a hair. Um, let's see here. I, I think maybe this was a time thing, but I would carry that dark outline that you're you're creating all the way up to the hand because the, the rim light is so strong on his, uh, well, our left viewing of the hand, or his arm, that I would really emphasize that with a darker background. Because I can see you doing it with the rest of it, which is excellent. I would carry that over, though, into the arm as well to really uh, make it shine. Um, and I think the last thing I would mention is I feel that with the hair, it, maybe this was like more of a last minute thing because I know I, I didn't get to the face and hair as much as I would have liked. But I think giving it more of that solid value could have helped a bit more. And it could have really added that contrast with these little stray hairs uh, against the very white, pale, lit body. So yeah, that would be my, my big other critique there. But thank you for joining. Was a lot of them today. All right, so next up is Troja. Um, also a first timer. I'm a bit out of practice, but I had a lot of fun. Although I think the proportions are a bit off and there is not <clears throat> really a lot of contrast. You know, I would agree to adding a little more contrast, but I can see you're, you're, you're right there. Like you're edging up to really pushing the values. Uh, I think you have a very a comic book way of outlining where it's like very heavy, very bold, very strong. And that's not a bad thing. I think that can work very uh, well in your style if you use it and you, like you, you embrace it. Uh, but I think when it comes to like softening up areas, like under this arm, I would have loved to see soften up similar to how you did this area because I think it would have read a little better. Where this feels very graphic uh, design in nature, where this feels more uh, like a shading around a body. Oh, let's see here. Yeah, I would say the hand feels a little off to me as well, um, but that that's just shading and I think a little bit of the proportion. I think bringing up that finger on the top could really help emphasize that he's grabbing that bamboo shoot. Um, I think this knee feels a little wobbly and if you look at the reference, it's kind of straight down. You know, I think that would help uh, but that's one of those things, if you just take a step back from the drawing, I think you would notice it right away. And then the foot feels really long. Uh, I think I would just you know, shorten that up and make it look like it's sitting on something. 
Because I think making this area longer made you subconsciously made this longer than it should be. So those would be my big advice uh, critiques to you. And then I would definitely push that shading. I would explore some of this lighting shading that you have. And rather than draw the, you know, the obliques like Y's, try to shade a sim similar pattern, but try to shade that out so it feels like there's a softer gradation um, that's, you know, that shows that it's skin that's laid over the muscle uh, tissue. And that will give more of that finesse that I think could uh, work really well here. So yeah, good job and thank you for joining. Nice, good work. <laughs> um, next up we have Eternal Light. Uh, there's no message on this one, so we're good to go. Uh, so for yours, I, you know, my first compliment would be you definitely seem to be comfortable with dark, mid, light tones. And I think that is something that will really shine if you keep working on what I think is maybe the area of um, where you could work on the most would be your proportions. Because it definitely feels very uh, large and almost bloated in some areas and then tiny where it should be larger. And I think one of the, the things that immediately throws it off is for his proportions, his upper half the torso versus the lower half, like the stomach area, is smaller. So it almost creates like this triangle effect where it should almost be upside down, where his shoulders going into the chest and then into his stomach should be a bit larger. Even though he's a thin guy, he still has a little bit of naturally of that triangular shape. And that's usually the difference between a male and female body is men tend to have larger upper bodies. And I think showing that on yours uh, could have helped out. And even like a simple, let me grab lighter value here. Like pushing that and then really almost shaving off that entire butt cheek on that side. Uh, I think that could help out a lot. And even with here, you can see how before and after how it feels very like bottom heavy and now we're getting more into the top heavy kind of similar to the reference so i think proportions would definitely be my biggest critique for you i mean even with this leg it's like we want to show more of the leg and as josh was saying it is it's a very awkward pose uh, to draw but it almost looks more awkward when you try to normalize the pose and like push it closer to the camera uh, if you do a, a good job with it it should still read as like a leg just foreshortened and in like that weird position because um, like even angling the foot outward when really it's almost straight down uh, it's like another one of those don't don't edit it for the viewer's sake really try to stick true to the original uh, proportions so yeah that'll be my biggest critique for you and uh, you know hope to see you continue working on that good job thanks for joining uh, next up is Fernando Ido says, don't know why I struggled with this model, especially I'm not used to having a time limit. I was kind of freaking out a bit. <laughs> In the end, first time with you guys, really liked the experience. Sorry about my English. Oh, no. Thanks for joining. Yeah, thank you. Uh, you know, I can tell that you're an artist that is very refined. I feel like you have a lot of similarities to the way I like to draw, where it's very uh, methodical. It's slower, but it, it creates a... Um, uh, what's the word purposed purposeful results where everything feels very laid out and it wasn't like accidental but I think when time becomes a factor all of a sudden you know you got to push to be more efficient with your strokes and your your values uh, so I actually think this is pretty good I think uh, in terms of values there's just some areas like I think the dark there the nipples are a bit dark I would lighten those up and then other areas I think need to be darker uh, and maybe this is a time thing, but like the hand, obviously. And actually, no, you did a good job with the values here. Yeah, I think time, honestly, that's what it reads to me as well. So your critique of yourself is the same I would give you too. It felt like time was working against you. And uh, I think maybe learning to work more efficiently, that's something I'm always struggling with with life drawing. I'm always trying to push myself to be faster. So I get it. I'm on the same page. Um, but yeah, and there's just some proportions stuff. And I try to say this in uh, every one of these follow along, like look at shapes that are in the original. Like you can see the, the gap between his arm and his forearm. It kind of creates like this sharp triangular, uh, you know, shape. Where on yours, it feels like the hump is more in the middle where it should be more 
uh, pushed over and then this should be more like this and just bring that arm down a little bit could just help that proportioning so much more so always look for the negative space within a drawing to help out with the actual subject matter I mean same with this you can tell how the sliver in the reference is actually smaller and that would have made the arm move over a little bit more which would have helped up here and then pushing the chest maybe forward a bit as well which would also move the nipple more in the, the correct place so you, I think you do a really well job with your execution I think just focusing on those little nitpicks and uh, being aware of how to move faster and trust me I get it that's something I'm trying to work with as well but good job um. Next up is Lavushka says, first time joining, I don't draw often, I'm a beginner, focused <laughs> on proportions, shapes, rather than shading or details. You know what's funny is, even for a beginner, your proportions aren't bad though. Like there's definitely some like little nitpicks here and there, uh, and I think, I don't know why, but a few of you did this with the knee, it's very like jutted out uh, this way, where in reality it should be more like closed. Uh, but I, I won't critique the shading as much because I think it does feel like a pass over at the end. But that would be something I would look into uh, working with, especially when you have like a really nice light hitting his back. And that's why I like a lot of these stock photos because they usually have really good lighting so that you can see the form and different uh, angles. And I, I would definitely emphasize that in your capturing of it then. So I would push those, and even like the shoulder form, you can see how it's a little lighter. Because I think that this doesn't read to have any form really at all. And I think that would be my biggest challenge for you is pushing, how do I create form and value? Uh, but proportion wise, for being a beginner, this is actually not bad. I, you know, it's like moving little things around, but overall I would say uh, just keep working on it. And the more that you practice, the better you'll get. And I can definitely see if this is already where you're at proportionally, it'll just get better and better. So, good job, and thanks for joining. All right, so next up we have Charles. I started with it being too top-heavy, and the staff is slightly pivoted to the left, which altered some of the proportions. Example, arms. I tried to work with getting accurate negative space, but not sure how well that was executed. Uh, you know, I think you're being hard on yourself. There's a lot that I like to this, and I actually like that you kept the bench almost, almost pure negative space. Like that's something I like to experiment with. And I know that this is more of a study, but imagine if that was just fully blank. It kind of creates this object or this shape that is in total contrast to this fully realized realism that you're trying to draw on top. But regardless of that, uh, yeah, I could, yeah, the top does feel a little heavier. It's not that bad though. Like I think just pushing out the side more, cause I feel like yours dips in too much, just pushing it out. Well, it would really help and give him some of that butt. Uh, overall, though, I think you did a pretty great job. I think I, I love that you're you're so confident going dark. That's something that I always am uh, reminding myself to try to be better at. I would say some areas it feels a little lost, like under the armpit, especially where in the reference you can see how the light goes all the way up until right under where it meets the arm. I would recreate that and have a really brisk nice line you know meeting it because then your darks will feel so much better if they're uh, complemented by you know a light source that uh, is in contrast to it so just even having that alone you can see how oh wow it can really make the back of his uh, body shine more if you even push it going down it feels way more backlit actually this is way too light you can tell that you took a photo and it's probably harder to see the the white of the paper as much but that's something I would definitely experiment with more and uh, maybe even I don't know if this will help you maybe sharpening your pencil or turning it because it, it feels very heavy in some areas where I think it's good to have that heavierness to it but then where you want some delicate areas like that line that sliver that goes right up under his arm I think you need to turn your pencil and like really go and detail it go get small with it and I think you're you're gonna do great with whatever art stuff you're gonna do. Because I can tell you what you're very comfortable being bold. Actually, here's another example on this side of the arm where the light source once again is so strong, but it kind of gets lost. 
but I like that you have these dark forms, but then really push that light right against it. See how much that makes it, you know, feel dimensional just by adding that little sliver of light. Uh, yeah, that'll be my biggest critique, and thank you for joining us today. Okay. Uh, next up, got Harrison Dawes says, I like the shading on the arms and legs, but I have stretched the torso out like way too much. <laughs> like a little trident. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I would agree. Uh, I think, you know, this leg was such an awkward one, and I didn't even really notice it while I was drawing it, but now looking at it afterwards, uh, yeah, it's a very foreshortened knee approaching the camera, and that's what makes the leg have that very triangular point look to it. Um, yeah, the feet just feel a little small. I mean, this one feels a little more right in comparison to the body, but this one definitely feels small. It's a little stretched out, and I think you're doing the same thing that the last uh, artist did, Charles did, where I think you went in with the body too much. It should be out a little bit, and then more down, and then back out. Where I think when you pull it in too much, it gives the rest of the body this very slim look to it, and that's where things can look very stretched out. Uh, and then kind of going back to the negative space talk I was talking about earlier, you can see the gap between his left arm and the pole that he's holding. There's like a little sliver. It's like a machete uh, type shape or something. Where if you pull the arm that much, I think that's where your proportions are starting to get a little like elongated and too long. Because I think you're not looking at comparison on one object to the next and how it relates to one another. So I, I definitely think using negative space to your advantage will help you a lot with future drawings. Uh, especially when you're using reference like this. So that would be my biggest critique to you. Uh, as the, the shading feels pretty good, I think you can push it even further. But I would say the thing that I would say the most could uh, pra use practice on would be proportioning. So, I mean, thank you for joining so much and good job. Nice work. We got Felix up next. My quick ones were hot garbage, but I'm actually pretty pleased with the one hour one. My quick ones. <laughs> I think I like doing more squiggly shading like you do. Um, just don't look at the feet. Ah! <laughs> uh, yeah, I love doing small circles with the pencil. That's how I shade everything. Um, yes, this feels much better than... Um, I remember with your woman one, this one feels more put together and uh, cohesive. And I think for you, at this point, maybe it was a time thing, but I would push some of those darker values around it. It can be really fun, and it can make your image really pop out because... Some of these lighter areas are so well done, and to make it really sing, uh, I would push these darker areas. And actually, this is a good example, speaking of the one before this, where you really capture that shape in between the pole and his arm on this side, where, and that's what really gives proportioning its uh, look, because you were able to capture it so well. Um, and a lot of these proportions feel accurate because of that. Maybe like here you could add a little more beef to the upper leg. Uh, you can see how all of a sudden when we're adding a lot of these um, darker values to the background, that's why I really enjoy doing it. Um, but I think you did a really good job. I love that you went for having a mid-tone everywhere and that it really allowed then the light uh, values to shine. Because when you have this light gray kind of act as the base for the whole body, anything that's darker or anything that's lighter will feel... Uh, more contrasted because of it. So I think this is a great return to form. I think uh, I, I didn't see your warm-ups obviously, but if they were like mine, I know what it's like being disappointed with them and having to come back from it. And it definitely felt like you came back from it. The only I will say though the the belly button. I would just you can tell he kind of has where you can see the inner part of the belly button. Just you know don't make it a dark circle, but uh, that feels good. Let me see here. And the feet aren't that bad, honestly. They're really not that out of proportion. It's just lack of time, I think, uh, to finish them. Oh, you know what, though? I think you did the same knee thing <laughs> where it has more of this, but you can see the other part of the calf because it's being pressed up against the leg itself, so it's like pushing out, and uh, it's a little lower. But besides that, great job. Uh, and I, I'm very curious to see where you go, as always. <laughs> uh, Ian says, definitely not a fan of my one-hour one. 
I got a bit fed up with some of the proportions and spent the rest of the hour procrastinating and doing the black bit. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I love a good, solid black background like this. It's kind of fun to look at the contrast. Uh, but I think for you, my biggest critique would be the proportions. And uh, really looking, once again, at that negative space. I've been using this under the arm for a lot of them because I think it's such a good shape to recognize proportions. And even with him, you can tell his arm isn't even past his nose in the reference. But in this one, his whole arm is seemingly in front of the nose. So look at the reference and try to find, you know, cohesive lines of access where things line up. And that's, honestly, that's how I do most of my proportioning is I line things up. I'm a very, like, mathematical, methodical type thinker. So when I look at uh, a life drawing, that's why it's hard for me to be quick because I like things lining up. Uh, but I think you would have noticed, okay, the arm is pushed way out in front. And that I think that made everything else get pushed out. Like then the leg feels even longer because of that. Uh, so yeah, that would be my biggest advice for you. And you know, I, I, I like the black background. But I think if you were using it as a distraction method, maybe not the best thing to do. <laughs> uh, but really focus on your foundation first. And yeah, good job. Thank you for joining. Do you feel like you sometimes use the negative space almost to build the shape of the absolutely body more than actually like well i look for visual cues so this is why uh you know, i don't even have an example on me but you know how you sometimes see a photo of someone where people get really excited because they want to draw pretty people right so let's say there's this girl but it's like a straight on shot of her in whatever pose and it's just like neutral lit everywhere those are really difficult to draw because there's no indicator lines of okay, there's a really dark contrast, like under his armpit here, you can see that. Yeah. And like this whole left side of the body, there's a lot of inner details that you can work with or like the crossing of uh, the arm or the pole in front of the leg or the uh, leg in front of the arm. It's like shapes built in between everything. Mm -hmm. So a lot of it is kind of just managing your shapes. And then once you feel good about where the shapes are managed, then you can get into shading and detailing all that. But like, I think a lot of people want to get to the detailing and they forget the foundational um, parts of how learning how to draw. So actually, it's good that you brought that up because, yeah, I think using the elements within the reference as, you know, lining things up on a grid is the best way to uh, learn it. Um, so next up, we have Charlie Gloom. This was exciting. I wanted to get the figure correctly on this exercise. Uh, you know what? I feel like overall it's pretty good. I think the proportions are just a little off in um, certain areas. And I think, once again, I think the, the back of the body here needs to be pulled out a bit more. Give them that butt. And I think having this uh, line automatically just feels better. So let me show you before and after. Where before it almost feels like he was wearing a corset and it was like it like sucked it all in and then he was able to breathe after you know and it has that more like relaxed pushed over uh pose and i think all that shading then could be pushed over um, a bit i actually love that you use this like red color i like the pink <laughs> gradations uh and i feel like there's like little um proportion issues everywhere like even on this leg i feel like it's very twisted and it kind of has this look to it and I think this was probably the problem leg for a lot of people because you can tell even in the reference it has that part that gets squished out. And then as it goes down, uh, the foot is almost facing straight down and then it has this you know, huge heel that's pushed out. Uh, and it, it looks really weird when you outline it, but then when you shade it, it starts to give context of why that leg looks so foreshortened and weird. And then shading it all the way down. Then um, I would be a little careful of points on knees. I would definitely round that out. But it's like you did a good job, though. It's it's like little little tweaks everywhere. I think this arm seems to be the the weakest part for me. And I think once again finding that uh, negative space there, and then also, oops, that's too far out. I think pushing this up and over. Because you can see where the point on where it meets the leg 
and then it has like that gap, which is pretty similar to the one that you had. Uh, but I think just pushing it over a little would help. And I think areas like this always are a little rough. And this could be because you're working with a pencil that may not erase. But I think if you were able to erase it, just cleaning that up can help you know, so much tell that the pole is on top of that form. And then I like that you did the red background, but I would carry it over up here as well because this arm reads a little robotic to me. I think because everything feels very straight, where because he's twisting his arm, all these muscles are got they gotta be twisted as well. And that's where you get that really cool wave effect in the lighting. So yeah. So good job. I, I commend you for working in red. I think that's kind of fun. I really want to work in color on one of these. Uh, so it just reminded me that I want to do it myself. Um, next up is Ella. Hey, Ella. Uh, tried to focus on using darker pencils, but it ended up being lighter than my previous one anyways. <laughs> I think I fiddled too much with dif the different pencils than just drawing, but oh well. I wanted to focus on the values in anatomy, but today was not my day. I should have warmed up with you all. The head should have also been moved way more to the right. Yeah, I think these are things that you can notice. I don't even feel like I have to critique you on some of this because I've obviously seen your previous work and I can tell that you you know you can push things and uh, edit. It felt like a lot of time was put toward this arm and then the rest of it just needed more time. Uh, and I think maybe those warm-ups would have helped you ease into it better. And I'm not going to give you too much of a critique on the proportions because I think you see what needs to be edited. Um... Yeah, I think overall it's it's pretty good, but I think it just it needs a little bit of editing uh, throughout. I, I do really like the shading you did on this arm, though. It does feel like the muscles are twisted, and it has that you know wave crossing effect. Uh, and I like that you carried that highlight all the way up the back. But I think you already know what needs to be adjusted. So all I'm gonna say is you know good luck on the next time doing them and. Uh, I know you can you can push more than just this. And I'm glad you were able to make it for the last one. All right, and then lastly we have AJBG says, uh, first time joining, this was really fun. Thanks oh, for thank joining. You. Yeah, I'm glad you were able to make it. Uh, okay, looking at this, I can tell you you're you're probably really good at like capturing a form quickly because I can tell this felt like the proportions feel pretty good and uh, you feel very confident going dark where you need to. I think my biggest critique for you is to maybe push in more of that mid-tone, because I can feel you're very comfortable with a very light, almost like negative space light tone, and then a, a darker tone. And I think maybe having that buildup of that in-between value might be the, the challenge. It could be working with a lighter pencil. It To me, this looks like a 2B or like a, yeah, it looks like a 2B pencil. So it's gonna be a little more bolder, a little more texturized. Uh, but I think having a buildup of like a softer value, let me make a new layer, could really help some of the areas. Or maybe even try using a blending stump, one of these guys. I think that could help you soften some of these darker forms. And then it would give more of that gradation that I'm, I'm talking about. Let me see. I'm kind of like blending this uh, digitally as I would traditionally with a blending stump. Give some shadow there. Then a lot of that in the shadow. All right, so if you turn that on and off, you can see how it's starting to build up more of that softness in that, you know, creating the dimension to the form of the body, where before it definitely feels good, but it, it feels more uh, rough, which isn't a bad thing necessarily, but I think pushing some of those softer values and uh, creating those mid-tones so that when you want to create a highlight, so let's say like on this side of the body, if there was more of that mid-tone, when you bring in that highlight, or that rim light, I should say, it can really make it uh, shine. 
And especially if you push it right up against, let me grab one of your darker values here. Um, this like dark background. Obviously it wouldn't be this dark. Let me grab a more gray. So yeah, maybe experiment pushing some of the background elements because I think you're at that point where uh, you, you probably do have time to explore this because uh, you seem like a quicker artist just based on what I'm seeing here. And let me see what that looks like on and off. You can see how it's just pushing it into that next stage because I think you're there. So I, I would almost want you to see you uh, take it uh, one step further. So great job. I think this is uh, pretty good proportionally and I would just keep going from here. All right. Leave that does then for the one hours. He's on. Woof. All right. Good job, guys. Nice. Uh, this was definitely a difficult one for myself, so it was kind of interesting to see how you all did with the final one. It seemed like overall, though, you guys nailed the final one. I don't know if it was like a build up. Maybe the ones before it were so challenging that by the time we got to this pose, it was more relaxed. And I think having way more time to uh, refine it maybe helped out a lot. But thank you so much for coming to this live stream. Uh, we won't be doing this next Wednesday because we'll be on a uh, family vacation, but we will be back the weekend after. It'll probably be not a draw along. It might just be a casual working on something that I'm doing at that time. And yeah, uh, thank you guys so much for coming. That's all I can say. Nice. What do you have? Um, definitely we should do these again. I think the I like the setup for these two. Yeah, and I need to redeem myself. <laughs> I think maybe next time we'll do like a mix of male and female. Because I think that will be a good challenge of going from like more of a structured boxy form of a male body to a more curvy rounded form of a female. And I think maybe even having different body shapes may help too. Uh, sometimes that can be challenging for artists, but I think that's good. I remember, actually Lane, if you're still here, we had the heavier set model and it was really fun to draw her because there were just so many forms and so many things that are different than a typical life drawing session. So that would be like an added uh, challenge because it's probably something that a lot of uh, you guys haven't done before. So thank you so much. Uh, sorry I was so quiet for the first half, but uh, next time I'm going to bring that energy and we'll be back uh, to form. Okay, nice. take care. And if you thank guys want to keep everyone. the conversation going, you can go to our Discord below. And that's all I got. Okay, thank you guys so much. And until yeah. next time, bye, 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 bye. <gasps> bye. <laughs>